Statesboro, Georgia. Today, Sports South brings you the Southern Conference and the first conference game ever for the Eagles of Georgia Southern. They play host to the defending champion, the Bulldogs of the Citadel. Good afternoon, everybody. Sam Smith joined by Jeff Van Note for 18 years in the National Football League with the Atlanta Falcons, and now joining us in the booth to watch some great Division I AA football. Well, Georgia Southern, they've wanted in the Southern Conference for a long, long time, and Jeff, today, they get their wish. Well, they've dominated a lot of uh, Division I AA play over the last several years, and now they get a chance to play for a conference championship. That's what they're all about now. They, they really want a chance for all of their sports teams, but it starts today with football. Well, they have to go against the defending champions, but it's almost like a rebuilding year for the Citadel. Coach Charlie Taft has to first of all look at a new starting quarterback and also uh, a rebuilding defense. First of all, let's start with Haynes and Gamble, the uh, middle linebacker for the Citadel. Well, Citadel lost a great All-American quarterback. Jack Douglas uh, led all quarterbacks in the history of college football as far as running the football. C.J. Haynes is trying to replace him. He's the one who's got to make this offense go. Tracy Gamble is the middle linebacker in this flex 4-3 flex defense. What you're going to see here is the middle linebacker has got to make a lot of plays against a three-back offense. Big day for him is expected. He had a good day last week against Wolford. For Georgia Southern, of course, having solid players on both sides of the line is something they enjoy. Fifteen starters coming back, and they'll start a quarterback with Joe Dupree. Handles this wishbone very, very well in their flex bone, and also defensively, Alex Mash may be one of the best in Division I AA. Well, a few times you'll have to get to play at two colleges, your home state. Here's uh, Joe Dupree, a transfer from Georgia. He adds the dimension of throwing the football to this flex bone offense of Coach Stowers, and Alex Mash the coaches voted him the premier defensive player of the year pre-season, pre and I think he'll live up to that billing. He's a strong force in the middle. Well, of course, uh, it was Georgia Southern winning over Savannah State handily last week, but uh, Citadel was defeated by Wolford on the score of 20-6. to 6. Was that a wake-up call for the Bulldogs? It's got to be. Uh, Citadel, uh, they're coming off a great year last year. They had a great football team. They have a lot of inexperience in their offensive line, especially in their offense. They, they just can't roll their helmet out there against a the football team. They've got to play with some intensity. They know the work's cut out for them today against Georgia Southern. Well, it's the defending champion against the newcomer, the Citadel, against Georgia Southern here on Southern Conference Football. Dave Branch, our third voice on our broadcast today, will join us on the sidelines. We return after this timeout. Georgia Southern, a beautiful Saturday afternoon as we're ready for the kickoff, and you can see 79 degrees. Clear skies, bright sunshine drenching most of this crowd, and northeast winds at about 10 miles per hour. Great conditions. Our third man on the sideline here once again is Dave Branch. Sam, not only a great uh, weather to play today, but a superb surface to play on. Now, it actually rained heavily here three days this week, and on a normal grass field, it'd be too wet to even play. But this field has a special drainage system that was built when the field was constructed in 84. Now, below the surface, 8 to 12 inches of river sand. Below that, 12 inches of gravel, and then a lattice of drainage tiles. Now, those tiles take the water to each side of the field. Then you have two three-foot culvers, which carry the water about a quarter of a mile that way behind the stadium, beyond the band's practice field. Now, there aren't any pumps. It's all done by gravity. And Roger Inman, the director of facilities, tells me that in the aftermath of Hurricane Hugo in 1989, Eight inches of water fell on this field in four hours, and it didn't puddle even once. And with seven-eighths of an inch of Bermuda Tiff natural grass, we've got a sweet surface to play on today. Sam, back up to you. Well, I guess if i got any questions concerning my lawn, I know where to go to now. Dave Branch <laughs> will be helping us out today on the sidelines as you take a good look at Tim Stowers. Is uh, Georgia Southern and their Eagles looking for their inaugural game in the Southern Conference. He's in his fourth year, and that includes a championship in the 1990 Division I AA Championship. These two ball clubs, by the way, have met two times before, and Georgia Southern leads it 2 nothing. Last time they met was in the 1990 playoffs right here at Paulson Stadium, 31 to nothing, and they won the earlier one in the playoffs as well. So it has not been a happy time for Charlie Tapp nor the Citadel against Georgia Southern as he's a man that's enjoying his seventh year. But one of the things he did not enjoy was last week's game against Wolford. They lost with a score of 20 to 6. And, Jeff, one of the things we asked him was at the wake-up call his ball club might have needed. Yeah, this is a very inexperienced football team. And in talking to him yesterday, you and I, Sam and Dave, uh, he, he threw that out, that uh, perhaps his team wasn't mentally ready for Wofford. And, and he, he took the blame coaching-wise on that because that's his job, to get his team up and get them primed and positioned to play a game. And Wolford has had a pretty good record in the past, but they're a Division II football team, and they were able to move the ball very handily on what his, the strength of his football team is, its defense. That's where seven starters return. That, that should be the strength of what he's got going for him. Well, Charlie Tapp and the Citadel Bulldogs have elected to receive the football as they've won the toss of the coin, and after gaining only 148 yards on the ground last week, they've got to establish a running game, and that'll ski 
right around their outstanding running back in Everett Sands. We'll talk about the offense in a moment as Smith gets ready to kick off here for Georgia Southern. The approach is on, and the kick is end over end, and we're underway for the first conference game ever for Georgia Southern. On the two-yard line, straight out with the football, is Mitchum. He's up into the ball. is loose momentarily. Let's see who's got it. And it's going to belong to Georgia Southern. So an opening mistake as Richardson came in to wrap him up along with Taylor. Smith's kickoff fielded at the two-yard line, brought out to the 14, a fumble, and Georgia Southern has a great break early here. Well, you can see that Georgia Southern was gunned up on the sidelines. Here Taylor comes down and just gets his hand on the on the ball carrier's hand himself, pulls the ball away. But I think it's a little carryover from the sidelines. They were really fired up about opening this game up. Well, they line up quickly. Does Georgia Southern to get ready for their first offensive play? And here comes the flex ball to the outside. The pitch coming wide, and they run it towards the five-yard line. And out of bounds. As again, that's Fraley. Shafton Fraley running the football before Young makes the defensive stop there for the Citadel. But again, the flex bone showing an early offensive thrust as they move it down to the six-yard line. Sam, you really get a feeling that uh, Georgia Southern wants to get off early. They want to attack early. They want to score early. They want to get ahead and never look back. Dupree obviously does not throw much out of the flex. Three for nine, 124. A 74-yard touchdown pass last week, however. Through the middle, they try with Tyrone Stevens with the football and lining up the entire center of the line. Dellinger for one, along with Powell, making the defensive stop on the front line. This is the way the backfield will stack up and receivers with Joe Dupree. Watch out for Dawson, who had the 74-yard touchdown reception last week. The backs and receivers for the Eagles. Offensive line, this is a good experience offensive line. Ayub, uh, number 69, will be the strong man on the left side for them. Third down, only a yard to go. Here's down the line of scrimmage, looking in Dupree, fights his way to the one-yard line. The Citadel again bending a little bit, and in the middle, Tracy Gamble, the man we talked about, roaming down the line of scrimmage as we take a look at the defense here for the Bulldogs. We made mention that Sizer is going to be one of the keys coming from the defensive end. He's got to recognize Dellinger on the other side. The linebacker is very active, led by Tracy Gamble, but Young and White Whiterman are also outstanding players. The secondary, Corey Gay is a man they really have to rely on, he along with Cummings of the corners, to turn the option in. First and goal to go. Here's that option to the outside. They pitch it wide open, and Lester steps in unmolested. Touchdown, Georgia Southern early. So a mistake here by the Citadel on the opening kickoff, a fumble. And a quick run in from the one-yard line here for the Eagles. You can see where Citadel's defense is all joined inside. Aaron Self, the free safety. He's got the pitch man, also Dietrich Cummings on that side. Nobody out there on the pitch man, all trying to shut off the inside fullback. Reed Haley gets ready for the extra point. Backer, the punter, is the man that holds. And we've got a momentary halt here as it is called good. So the extra point is good, but there's a flag down as the officials will converse here for a moment, and Haley will stay on the field to see if he needs to kick again or not. But a good quick break here by Georgia Southern, unfortunate for the Citadel. As our referee this afternoon, Steve Landis. The defense had 12 men on the field. Point stands, penalized on the kickoff. So the problems are compounded by the Citadel as they not only give up the touchdown, but also the extra point with too many on, and they'll have to give up some yardage on the kickoff. We'll be back with more. 13.50 to go, opening period. Georgia Southern on top. Smith gets ready to kick off after the penalty is stepped off. Kicks off from midfield, and Mitchum, who's the man that fumbled the football earlier for the Citadel, just has to watch this one sail out of the end zone. So it'll be first and 10 for the Citadel. They'll have it at the 20-yard line after the touchback. And they'll have an opportunity to get their offense on the field, something they were hoping to do early, but didn't have the opportunity with the mistake. One of the things that uh, Coach Charlie Taft told us, Jeff, was the fact they had too much penetration by Wolford last week really disrupted their wishbone totally. That's how you're going to attack, I think, most three-back teams. You want to get some disruption in the handoff in the backfield. Uh, if you can grab that quarterback's leg, if you can get to him. So you'll see a lot of gaps, especially if they take big splits. Look at the split right now. 74 has the right tackle from the right guard. Haynes taking snap. Again, you saw the numbers in his game last week with only 62 yards passing. As there's no place to run as they give off to the first back through, and that's Sands. 
As we take a look at those that are starting for the Bulldogs today, again around Haynes, Sands, Mitchum, and a Little in the backfield, both Wright and Perry will be wind up as wide receivers, while, of course, Barris, Stevens, Hearn, Davis, and Wilkerson will make up the front line. Defensively for Georgia Southern, you talk about some good players down linemen. Alex Mash may be one of the best in Division I AA. The linebackers, though, make a majority of their tackles led by Paul Carroll, the man in the middle. Second down, nine yards to go for Citadel, their own 21-yard line. Haynes with the option. And from behind, he's going to be dropped. And you can see the pursuit of Charlie Burt that time from Winter Haven, Florida, a 218-pound junior. And that's the name of the game to string out that wishbone. They do a great job of stringing out. Charlie Bird, he's right at home in his responsibility. He plays off the block of the tight end, Wilkerson, and he comes down the line. Look at the pitch man covered, though. Southern had it covered all the way around. Uh, Brandon Rozell, the, the cornerback, he was there for the pitch if it hadn't. We made mention that the cornerbacks for Citadel will have to turn the option of Georgia Southern in. Rozell, along with Austin, are given that responsibility on this side of the defense. Haynes is dropped, and that's Alex Mash in the backfield for a loss. Well, Haynes had turned, was looking to the far sideline to throw, but didn't have any time at all as All-American 265-pound Alex Mash out of Thomasville makes the penetration. You, you talked about penetration just a second ago, Sam, mostly running plays. Here you see great penetration on a, on a pass play. They seem to turn loose Alex Mash on the right side, Levi, Levi Davis in the center, Bart Hearn. Nobody picked him up, let him go right through the gap. Only bright spot last week for the Citadel was the punting game, and Purcells booms one out after averaging 41 last week. Roselle with the field for Georgia Southern. And he ran a lot laterally, but nothing moving upfield, and the flag is down just out of your picture there. So Citadel coming in, a fumble on the opening kickoff, results in a touchdown for the Eagles. And now three and you're out of there, led by Alex Mass defensively for Georgia Southern, and now they have to punt it away to the Eagles. So it's holding on the run back on Georgia Southern, so the line of scrimmage would have been the 49-yard line. They'll have to step off the penalty, though, after a 30-yard line, a 33-yard punt. There you see our officials headed up by referee Steve Landis. And those of the general will be watching between the very in uh, shortened hash marks. As a matter of fact, we'll talk a little about that with Jeff Van Noe. in the back during the return against the receiving team. First down and 10. It's all first and 10 for the Eagles. Hash mark moved in, gives a lot of a quote unquote wide side of the field both way. We'll elaborate in a moment. Dupree is the quarterback. Lone running back behind him as they pitch it to the wide side and coming to the wide side is uh, right that is his, his right it's wide there it's just almost as much to the other side as well and the defense for Citadel closes down they will gain however maybe a couple of yards on the play as they move it beyond the 40 yard line Sam the colleges follow the pros hand and foot little by little as the rules change for the pros to make their game more entertaining to the public uh, you see them do the same thing with college football I predict some point in time that uh, the hash mark can be right along the goal post just like the pros <laughs> It would be tougher to kick a field goal in college then. By the way, they strung that out so well, they had uh, the ball had gotten loose and gone beyond the 40, so they back it up, and it's a loss of one on the play. So the Citadel, led by Cummings, one of the quarterbacks, makes the stop, and in the open is Stevens. Stevens looking for one block ahead of him. Willis may have given it to him. After 20 to 15, and finally knocked out of bounds. So from the 37-yard line, Cummings finally catching up, but not before Stevens had rambled for the big, big run down the field. And they get it all the way down. Again, that is going to be Williams as he and Stevens are the two running backs. They alternate, and this is going to be Williams. Lane Dellinger, the right end. He's got a shot at him, but he doesn't know he has the ball. He, he's, he's uncertain about who to tackle, and, and that's more of Williams' running rather than the blocking. He just found a little hole, squirted through it, was able to turn it on. In a heated battle for that fullback spot with Tyrone Stevens. Stevens, number 35. Williams, number 36. They line up at the fullback. With the two slot backs, one in motion, they give it off once again to Williams. Williams fighting for yardage this time. Last week gained 47 yards on 11 carries. At 24 yards as his longest, he's just, of course, uh, wiped that out with a long run of 49 yards here to set up this drive for Georgia Southern. Hey, don't give it to him the second time. He's saying, let me catch my That's breath. Right. I just went 49 <laughs> yards, Joe. Hold, hold off for a second. Uh, Tyrone, come in for one play. Williams will line up again as they have a second down and eight yards make it a little less than eight here for the Eagles as they threaten again here early on the defending champions. Ball is handed off. There may have been a miss 
communication between the center and the quarterback. And just to get any kind of playoff, they finally got the ball to Williams, which may have been ill-advised in the first place by Dupree. Yeah, they're trying to run. They're trying to run some kind of uh, cross back, back into the middle here with a cutback block. A lot of penetration by Dellinger throws it off, but the timing was off on the quarterback exchange. And 99% of the time, well, I'll say 95, that's the center's fault. Uh, all quarterbacks will tell you that, that's for <laughs> sure. Dellinger, the senior, out of Sumner, South Carolina. Very intense player, and you saw how he plays well. Here's the outside, his right again, who opened up with a good run earlier. That time got a shoestring tackle and coming up to make the stop as they bring Dan Johnson from Laurel, Maryland. A senior made eight tackles last week against Wolford. Well, you're going to see the safeties in this game on both teams. On the Citadel, Aaron Self, 25 and 21, Dan Johnson. They're going to be forced to make a lot of tackles. That's, you don't want them to do that all the time if your front seven are holding up. But that opens up the passing lanes if they come up to make the run tackle. Forces a fourth down and field goal time. They'll spot the ball down at the 17-yard line. The kick is up, and it is good. So Reed Haley, who did not have a chance for a field goal last week, it's his first of the year for Georgia Southern. From 27 yards away, he's put the Eagles on top even more. They've got the lead, 10 to nothing here over the Citadel. A very busy afternoon, Eric Smith kicking off for Georgia Southern. Mitchum, who fumbled that opening kickoff, feels it in the end zone and takes no chance in bringing it out. It'll be a touchback right out to the 20-yard line. And the Citadel has definitely got to get something going after another field goal try, and good this time by Haley. As it goes with four minutes, took him to score. Six plays, 51 yards all told, and the field goal puts him up by the score of 10 to nothing. And on the other side, Charlie Tapp, uh, Jeff has got to be thinking, what have I got to do to get us off of the snide here so far? Worst case scenario, get behind early against a fired up Georgia Southern team. They don't get beat very often here at Paulson. He's got to come out maybe and make some big plays on his defense or else maybe the throwing game. I, I know he doesn't want to do that early. Again, the gaps, you can see him on the near right side, very wide there for a wishbone. And here again, as they try to open it up, as Haynes tries to string it out on the outside. And takes it all the way out to only a couple of yards gained on the play as they really string that defense out. It's Dawson, one of the linebackers, comes up to make the stop. Dawson from uh, Moultrie in Georgia, 6'1", 213. A senior starter from last year made 92 tackles in 1992. That's a strength of Georgia Southern's defense with Dawson Carroll and Nick Davis back there, all returning starters. They're the one, two, three tacklers for this football team last year. He's got a lot of strength on defense, a little bit a little bit unsure of his outside guys, Burt and Morris. Second down, eight yards to go for the Bulldogs. You see that wishbone unbroken at the moment. They get to the first back through and again trying to vault for yardage. That time is Sands. By the way, Stump Williams, uh, Mitchell, that is, holds the all-time record for the Citadel. And Sands, who had over 1,400 yards last year, is trying to break that this year. He's only number three on the rushing list. Well, Everett uh, Sands... Uh, the Sandman, as they affectionately <laughs> call him. I think he knocked a guy out one time in practice, put him to sleep, and he has been a tremendous runner between the tackles, as James Williams has been for Georgia Southern. But he's got a very young and experienced lineup there. Only one starter back, Shane Stevens, the left guard. Third down, five to go for Citadel. They, of course, have had their problems. Down the line of scrimmage is Haynes. Haynes elects to keep the ball, and he ran right into Sean Austin, number 18 for one, that turned it in. Got the inside support coming in from Davis, Carroll, and Dawson. All of those linebackers were there. But Austin out of Thomasville really made the play here. Look at this pursuit by the Georgia Southern defense. You can't see them flowing down the line of scrimmage. That's Burt. There's Austin. That time, maybe he should have pitched to Torrance Rivers. It's yep. a decision-making process by the quarterback. And, and there, maybe Rivers had a little bit of chance to get up, up field if he'd have gotten the ball to him. So getting ready to punt the football away again is Purcell. 41-yard average. Last week, 33 on his first kick, and he sends a pretty good one into the breeze. Fielded back at the 35-yard line, Georgia Severns, uh, Roselle. And he's not going to go anywhere again as they've had very little run back on some very good punts so far for the Citadel. And that's been one of the bright spots here this afternoon. Bolheimer comes up to make the stop for Georgia Southern. So young and all, and of course, you might note that Atlanta Braves had as they've now come back to tie the San Francisco Giants in their race in the National League West. And a lot of those fans over here in this area of Georgia, as there are throughout the entire Southeast, and America's team getting a lot of play all around the country right now. Much more favorable than when Dallas was America's team. I thought you might say that. 
It's first and ten for Georgia Southern. Back to throw his first pass of the night, Dupree. Had a man open for a moment, but making a fine defensive play, jumping up and batting that one down. The defensive secondary man, Mike Weidman. Weidman out of uh, Columbia, South Carolina, just got a fingernail on that one. Well, you can see Citadel starting to honor the run a little bit. Uh, they're, they're really forced in there. Weidman makes a great play to tip this ball, or Shaft and Fraley has the reception. He still gets a hand on it, even though Weidman gets up and, and disrupts it a little bit. He could have gone, talking about Joe Dupree, to the other hash mark, too, because Wright was running free down that hash mark. Shaft and Fraley with excellent speed had found the crease in the zone. And had that one been there, it had been another big gainer for Georgia Southern, but it's not. It's second down and ten. Lone running back behind Dupree. There's that little pivot, and he'll be dropped for a loss. Good penetration through the middle of the Citadel. And again, it is Micah Young at number 41 out of Florence, South Carolina. He's got a nose for the football, and he certainly smelled it at that time. That little pivot turn that Dupree almost is one of those delaying tactics. If you can hold your blocks long enough, it makes a, a good play. But in this case, it did not. That's the key, being able to hold your block long enough. And I think it was Jamie Glover, the right tackle, the young freshman right tackle that time. Not a good job of uh, stabilizing the block on Mikey Young, letting him come underneath. You've got to really hold it because there is a delay as a quarterback does all that movement. Citadel's defense has come to play on this series. It's back to throw his second pass to Pree. Has a man on the far side, but overthrows him well incomplete as Cummings was back there, and there was no chance of catching that football. It's like he was looking uh, to this side of the field, our side, to Darren Willis first, and it wasn't there. They had single coverage. The blitz came from Citadel. They brought, they brought uh, their corners off the right side and left side, but it was pretty good downfield coverage, and I'm not sure if he didn't want to just throw it away to well, Dexter Dawson, who he's trying to get it to. Dawson, of course, caught the 74-yard touchdown pass last week for a TD against Savannah State. No chance to catch that one. Fourth down, 11 punt time. And with the wind at his back, Thatcher will get this one end over end, but it does take a good bounce for the Citadel. And it's going to be down at the 29-yard line by Georgia Southern, where the Bulldogs will take over with a little better field position this time to have an opportunity to do something with the football. When we return, first and 10 for the Citadel. They trail on the board, though, 10 to nothing on a beautiful Saturday afternoon here in Statesboro, Georgia. A nothing lead by Georgia Southern over the Citadel. As the Bulldogs will have it first and 10, they'll have it out at the, the 31 yard line. They spotted the ball a little outside the 30. As here again is Haynes getting strung out all the way down the line of scrimmage and trying to turn the corner. No place to go. Paul Carroll, number 43, the middle linebacker. And the number one tackler last year with 107 tackles makes the stop. It's really kind of a guessing game on defense a lot of times against the three-back offense. Sometimes you might go on a wide side of the field with your defense, and it looked at that time that they're uh, guessing right against Citadel as they didn't seem to honor the inside fake to the fullback, and it was all of an, a wide run. They were right there. So a tough afternoon for Haynes as it's a second down. They'll need six yards to go for the first. They give it off once again to the Sandman, and... I tell you what, Georgia Southern has got that middle very well diagnosed. And when you consider all the yards that Sands has gained in his career, he's had to do it inside the tackles. That's a tough way to earn your scholarship, certainly at the <laughs> Citadel. It's the hardest way. They're, they're trying to trap Mash here. They give him a big gap on the left side, outside the center over the right guard. And then he, he comes across the field, but they don't get the good trap. And then Sellers, the other tackle, and Paul Carroll are both there. That's a strong triangle in the middle with Mash, Sellers, and Paul Carroll. Third down, five yards to go for the Bulldogs. 5-17, first quarter, they're down, 10-zip. Haynes, a little delay at the line of scrimmage. Strings it out, but not enough for a first down. It'll bring up another punt situation for the Citadel. As Georgia Southern just runs it right down the line of scrimmage and finally turning it up on the inside is once again Dawson. Also over there again is number two, that is Williams. Watch the corner, if you can catch this on, uh, on television, Brancis Williams. He makes the force early. He, he's telling C.J. Haynes, hey, you're going to have to take it up inside. I've got the outside pitch all the way, and there's nothing inside. They've got great inside-out pursuit by Georgia Southern. By the way, the middle linebacker, number 43, Paul Carroll, as we saw in the replay, was definitely the man that made the first contact. So it's punt time once again for the Citadel. And Purcell gets one off the side of his foot. It will not be a good punt that he's enjoyed so far, but it will not get a run back at all. And Georgia Southern will take over in their own 32-yard line. So the Citadel again trying to establish that running game, but are not being able to do anything successfully here against Georgia Southern on the inside. 
You may see Haynes pull up and hit a little short opener coming up. They may have to try to loosen it with a little pass or two next. Well, they got to do something. They need a big play, but the game's still in perspective. It's 10 nothing. It's still in the first quarter, still in the first half here, and the game hasn't gotten out of perspective. Another score might put it to the situation where you've got to expose your, your passing game much more than they've been doing. It is Joe Dupree, quarterback, wearing number four, runs like a deer, gives it off to the first back throw, and this time it is number 35. Tyrone Stevens, he along with Williams alternating at that running back spot. And he gains it out over the 35, will take it ahead to right at about the 38-yard line. That's a pretty good duo when you go with Williams and Stevens running back there. Yeah, big battering ram kind of a guy, a fellow that they, uh, they discovered on their JV team and had a great spring talking about Tyrone Stevens because Williams is the returning leading rusher. He's been the one who set the pace for this flex bone with that inside running, and he's fighting for his life to beat out Steven. Well, he was the high man in the rushing against Savannah State last week as he carries again to the 40, gained 77 last week, and gained several yards here as he moves it to the 40, but it's going to bring up a third down and right at three yards to go for the Eagles. They have enjoyed great success here at uh, Paulson Stadium, as we pointed out. Uh, they're almost virtually unbeaten. They've lost only five games since the stadium was built back in 1984, and in the process have also enjoyed some national championship runs right here at home. They've won four of the Division I AA titles, and now a member of the Southern Conference. They add even more strength to a conference that's getting better every year. Big third down play for Southern. A flag is down. Stop the play. A procedure will be called here by the officials. Well, I don't think I've ever seen a team react to a whistle so well. <laughs> I mean, they, everybody just kind of pulled up on a legal procedure here on the offense, but uh, it, it came right as the snap. The snap, I mean, uh, the whistle, and uh, they did a great job. Very, very well schooled here. So the march off against Georgia Southern. Here's Steve Landis. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Still third down. It's like uh, guys uh, kind of gathering around in the nearby Pizza Hut, and somebody calls for a pizza, and they just stop to see if it's their <laughs> pizza ready, as they definitely came to a screeching halt. So it's a third down, and instead of three, they've got eight to go now for Southern. Let's see if Dupree puts it up. He does. Running for his life, but he won't get away. Fine inside pursuit once again coming from the total inside, and that's Sizer, number 46, from East Lansing, Michigan. A second team All-Southern Conference last year, and he certainly gets through there in a hurry. Well, they got to take some chances on offense, but they need some on defense, too. They go with a blitz here. Wyman's coming up the middle. Dan Johnson, the strong safety. He's hanging in on the tight end. Great sack by their rush in, Garrett Sizer. He's the guy that they're going to expect to get to the quarterback a lot. Thatcher will be forced to kick his football away here. He's hit about his own 15. And he kicks with a win and drives one long. Feeling the football upfield is Dan Johnson. Johnson looking to run, a place to run. There is a flag down. And he'll gain only a couple of yards after making the reception. And it's going to be out at about the 32. And we'll wait for the flag. Thatcher again with a nice punt of 40 yards to set this up for the Citadel. Citadel, again, problems with their offense. None so far to speak of this afternoon. And it's going to be holding on the run back against the Citadels, and problems are compounded here, Jeff. Well, they have, uh, let's see, they penalized, I think, Georgia Southern twice now, but neither one of them has hurt. For the Citadel, though, when you get a penalty like this, it really compounds it. They, this is the best field position they would have had around the 35-yard line. And now they're pushed back once again. Back against the receiving team during the return. 10-yard penalty. First down. So they'll back it up after the run back. As they certainly need a break here in the first period as it winds towards the 218 mark. This will bring up a first and 10. And they'll try to see what will happen here as they're going to change the guard here. And it's going to be Walker. Kent, uh, Ken Troy Walker, again from uh, Pomona in uh, Florida. He played at Ely High School, Pomona Beach, and down the Papano Beach, excuse me, Papano Beach, as he played in the Florida area as the new quarterback. Again, just a sophomore, as Haynes apparently ineffective on the option. And against Georgia Southern, neither one of the quarterbacks are going to have all that big a day, it appears. Gain of only a couple of yards. Trying to cross him up a little bit. That was uh, Eric Little, the halfback, coming across the backfield. And I guess you would call it a cross buck op option, kind of a running to the left side. Georgia Southern, great defensive pursuit. Walker's only experience as a college football player has been with the junior varsity at Citadel last year. He's opting down the line of scrimmage, and he, too, runs into all kinds of bodies as Charlie Bird is making the tackle. Let's once again go downstairs. Here again is our friend downstairs, Dave Branch. Dave? 
Sam, thank you. We've got with us Coach Irk Russell. Coach, you built this program from scratch in 1981, and by the time you retired after the 89 season, you had three national championships and a runner-up. This has got to be a proud moment for you today, your team, uh, first, first game in the Southern Conference. It really is. This is something that we've always strived for since we started our program. We thought Georgia Southern and the Southern Conference would be a natural, and I believe it will be. I think we've got a lot to offer the conference, and I'm sure the conference has a lot to offer us. Now, Coach, since you retired, uh, I know you've been still and very involved in the school, but is it tough to sit here and watch them play today and, and not be coaching? Well, it's a different kind of tough. I miss the fire out of it, David. I, I miss being around the players on a daily basis, and I, I miss the, the coaching staff meetings. But uh, I'm getting used to it, and I'm getting to play a little more tennis than I used to. And I sit on the beach and uh, read the paper and watch the scenery. <laughs> well, Coach, good luck on that tennis game. Sam, back up to you. Thank, Thank you very much as Eric Russell watches the program that he helped build from scratch. Once again, put the Citadel on the sideline as it's three and out. As the punt goes in over in, and that is uh, Dexter Dawson, number 85, making the run back. After a 43-yard punt, a good one into the win. By the Citadel, again, a fine run back, and Dawson puts Georgia Southern once again right back into field position. And the Citadel did come out throwing a little in the last series, but again, Georgia Southern had that well diagnosed. Cantroy Walker, a, a left-hander, he's, he's reputed to be a very accurate passer, but he hasn't had many opportunities, and that's a, the big problem with the Citadel offense. A lot of inexperience, except at that fullback spot, and that's not going to help him unless your linemen have been playing together for a period of time. So on the first two possessions, Georgia Southern came out with a touchdown and a field goal after mistakes by the Citadel. And now they're trying to throw the football, and the Citadel, good secondary coverage, will give that sack to them. As they make the sack, there's the Citadel, and they had all kinds of people on that front line crashing in and led by Lane Dillinger. Here's the situation where Joe's got to get rid of the ball. Just dump it. If you don't feel like you've got uh, somebody picked out that's going to have, have some chance of catching the ball, Get rid of the ball. Don't take this sack, this 11-yard uh, sack. You've got to dump it. There's enough time uh, to, to, to unload it early, but it was, as you said, Sam, real fine downfield coverage by the Citadel. Both Sizer and Dellinger kind of pinching from the defensive ends to contain the very fleet-footed Joe Dupree. This time, he draws a little quarterback draw, trying to gain some of that yardage back. Only two will be put on the stat sheet. It brings up a third and still long yardage here. Well, that winds down the first period of our ballgame here in Statesboro, Georgia. The first conference game ever for Georgia Southern. Again, a couple of early breaks on mistakes made by the Citadel. They've got the Eagles on top of the score of 10 to nothing. We return after this timeout. High right now as we head for the second period. Georgia Southern 10 to nothing over the defending Southern Conference champions, the Citadel, but a third and 17 coming up for Georgia Southern. Here's Dupree. Throwing that one up for grabs and tending on the near sideline for Dawson, but all kinds of pressure, and guess what? It came from those defensive ends, Dellinger and Sizer. Well, they're having uh, great success so far here. Two fine defensive ends. Uh, Sizer's been a three-year starter there. Dellinger, he was a starter in 91, hurt his knee in 92 against Arkansas, and then last year uh, almost lost his life. He was cut in a fight around his neck. Dan Johnson saved his life, the safety, and was awarded the Carolina Order of uh, Palmetto, which is the highest award you can be given to a citizen in the state of South Carolina. Just uh, remarkable things about teammates and friendship. You saw Thatcher's numbers there on his first two punts. This one will carry just about the same distance. And a little bit of run back will come on the tail end of that, but not much. As feeling it was Cummings, he'll gain about three on the run back. And the Citadel, who once again, as Jeff pointed out, were desperately looking for a better field position, may have the best they've enjoyed this afternoon. <laughs> That's not to say much either, but uh, <laughs> you'll be happy to take it to 32 where they've been. Sam, you get a feeling, though, about the Citadel's defense starting to take more chances. They're running the blitz. It opens it up a little bit for the pass, but you've got to have time to throw it. Your quarterback and your receivers have got to get open and recognize what's going on. Walker's going to stay in at the QB spot here for the Bulldogs. First and 10 at their own 33. And in the ball, and they give it straight ahead to Sands, and Sands gets the line of scrimmage and no more. Center of the defensive line, Sellers, Mash, Burt, and Morris. And the linebackers pushing from behind all make the stop on that play. Mash, in particular, on the bottom. Boy, he's a load. I mean, he's about 6'2", 6 6'1 6 maybe, but a 265-pound man has great lateral quickness. He's able to shed a block. They like to play him on the center a little bit, move him back and forth, and, and he can really move around along that defensive line of scrimmage. 
Mash, of course, also has some excellent speed, 4.79, and also squats 600 pounds. So he's a guy that has some great lower body strength in addition to being a strong customer upstairs. It's a second in the same 10 for the Bulldogs. This once again, Walker, oh, nail as he turns that corner for 35. Georgia Southern really supporting from their secondary spot is coming up to make the stop, and you saw the great hit as they continue to get some support from the backside, and that was Hunt, number 37, that made the hit here. It's a matter of decision-making, and if he'd have turned it up maybe or a little outside or turned it up a little sooner, he had a shot at it. But then you allow that Georgia Southern defense, that inside-out pursuit to come on you, and he almost, almost was able to turn it outside behind the block of Andre Mitchum. Third down conversions has not been good for either one of the clubs, as you saw the numbers there. Georgia Southern converting only one of theirs, and of course the Citadel, none of the four so far, and they won't get this one. Nash just covers Walker and buries him in the turf. Boy, he's so quick. <laughs> Too quick. So the loss will take it back inside the 30-yard line, right at the 30, where they'll finally spot it down, and once again, kick time for the Citadel. We never really got somebody to come down. They're doing a thing we used to call uh, wave blocking, where your line will come on down and fan out. And I don't think Wilkerson was able to get down in front of him and uh, get his head in front to stop the momentum. Of course, he wasn't going to let him. He, he was just interested in penetrating. Purcell will kick again for the Citadel. But a little win we had earlier is not blowing now. That's a great kick, though. This is Dawson. Got an opening at the 30. Good spin move and gets some more yardage out of a great second effort. Dexter Dawson gets Georgia Southern even better field position out at the 43-yard line, and they've got a lead early on as they're celebrating a little. Georgia Southern with a 10 to nothing lead with 12.31 to go before the halftime, a holding on that last play on the run back, and they'll be penalized all the way back inside their own 15-yard line to the 12, where they'll take over first and 10 here as the quarterback again, Dupree, will bring his flex bone to the attention, and straight ahead here once again, the running back is number 35, Stevens. He and Williams with a dynamic duo is coming from the fullback spot, and they ramble for a first down out near the 30-yard line. What's really kind of weird about this is the fact they'll run Stevens and Williams together in the backfield before the day is probably over. Well, put your best backs in the backfield. Uh, they've also put in Lester, and he was a fullback candidate one time, too. He plays the slapback a lot for him now, but uh, get them all in there, and that's attacking that inside of that Citadel line with the same play that James Williams broke. Speed on the left with Willis, speed on the near side from Dawson. First and 10 to go. In motion again, they give it straight ahead, and Stevens this time tripped up right at the line of scrimmage. Good penetration coming down once again on the front line there. Number 66 is Bulmer. Judson Bulmer, 6'2", 225, and a senior on this ball club. Got excellent penetration. He, by the way, is in there for Sizer now, defensive right end. Tim Stowers had a great, great run. He was with Irk uh, Russell, of course, when they won three of the four titles here as a gentleman running with the offensive line got a chance, and he won the national title in his first year as a head coach. Not too shabby, is it? After <laughs> one three start, win 11 in a row. <laughs> 11 straight for the title. Unbelievable. Gate of only a yard in the last place, second and nine. This is Dupree. If he gets in the open field, watch him run. He's got one uh, man to beat, and finally catching him from behind. They'll prevent a touchdown, and coming up from behind to finally make the stop is number 21. That is Johnson. But Dupree, you see how well he used his blocks. Very patient. Rather than just trying to outrun him, he just used them all the way down the field. You think of Dupree coming out of high school when he went to the University of Georgia as a throwing quarterback, but he is a great option quarterback, and he's had a chance now to, to get into this offense. Look at him pick up his blocks and use Dexter Dawson down the field, run away from tackles, pull his legs away. He made three men miss. Even a Kentucky lineman can open up a hole that big, couldn't he? <laughs> he walked through that. Dupree giving it off. They try to give it to a speech to this time and right. No place to run. I tell you what, Dellinger, number 59, is having himself a whale of an afternoon for the Citadel. Working against the young freshman here, Jamie Glover, this time. He forces him in the backfield. You can't allow penetration. You want to keep that first line of scrimmage solid if you're looking at it from an offensive standpoint. And instead, uh, it, it is Dellinger making the block on Glover, pushing him back. It disrupts the play. A 43-yard run a moment ago by... Dupree has set up Georgia Southern in business in the Citadel territory at the 28-yard line. Dupree with the lone running back. They've got Williams back in again. Dupree down the line of scrimmage. He'll have no place to run, and again they string it out down the line of scrimmage. The incisor number 46 on the other side makes the stop. And a good defensive play for the Bulldogs. 
Well, Garrett Sizer plays the option like you want your wide end to do. He, Lester is trying to block him, and he holds him off, and yet still plays the quarterback, makes the quarterback make the decision, and he's there to get in on the tackle. Third down, 11 yards to go for Georgia Southern. Just when it looks like they've got things well in hand, as we pointed out earlier, and Jeff noted that the Citadel defense has certainly started to bolster themselves since those first two early mistakes. And now a big third down play. They give it in the middle, no place there. And again, Williams has stopped for a gain of maybe only a yard or so. What you do with your defense, and this is the most experienced unit for the Citadel, you, you, you start to give them a lift and hopefully they'll give it to the rest of the football team. Georgia Southern's made two big runs, the one by Williams early, and now the one by Dupree, and the first one they got a field goal out of, this one they're forced into a field goal situation. Got to give the defense a lift. Well, Haley has had two 53-yard field goals in his career last year, hitting 10 of 16 field goals, and he'll try now a 45-yarder. Not much wind into his face. It's on its way. He's got the leg, and it is good. 45-yard field goal once again. As they get it up and down, they spot it at the 35 and the 10, and he has put them on the board for a 13-0 lead by Georgia Southern. So as they celebrate, Georgia Southern keeps the pressure on the defending champions, the Citadel. We're back here on Sports South after this timeout. Well, Haley's second field goal is added to a 13-0 lead here by Georgia Southern over the Citadel. And it took seven plays, 61 yards, of course, set up mostly by a 43-yard run by Dupree. And you see the field goal of 45 yards, and that's where we stand as Smith again. It's ready to kick off for Georgia Southern. He'll have a tired leg today. This will be fielded short by Cummings at the 10. He's got a block in the middle of the field. Uses it well and gets it all the way out past the 35 to the 39-yard line. And slowly but surely, the Citadel getting a little better field position but have not been able to take advantage of it. Here's a reminder while we've got a moment. We want to remind you that announcers for this game have been contracted for and approved by the Southern Conference. Any use, rebroadcast, or other transmission of this game without the express written consent of the Southern Conference and creative production is prohibited. Sam Smith, along with Jeff Van Note, as we go on you in the booth, they branch down on the field with us today as the Citadel has a first and 10 to go. And again, they have the ball right at about their own 38-yard line, the best field position they've enjoyed today. And Walker remains at quarterback. Gains maybe a couple of yards out to the 40-yard line as the defense for Georgia Southern again strings it out down the line of scrimmage, and the linebackers become even more active again. Well, there's the recognition by this defense. Huey Hunt and uh, uh, Nick Davis... They're able to recognize what's going on. They turn loose Everett Sands. He runs right through the secondary. They're not even honoring the fake a lot of times. And instead, they're coming off their blocks, as you saw, as you saw Bert, Bert do right there, and Huey Hunt to make the stop. Second down, eight yards to go. Walker back to throw again. The left hander's got the good arm. And it's going to be intercepted. This is Roselle. Pass was intended for Boatwright. Roselle moving it towards midfield. Side steps along the sideline. It'll be out of bounds at the 43-yard line as Roselle comes up with the intercept. You want to make the big play, but you don't want to give them the opportunity to make the big play also, as they did on the opening kickoff. Great coverage by Brandon Roselle. He's just dogging Boatwright, laying off his backside shoulder. I guess he feels he can match him speed for speed, and he's the one who makes the leap. It's his leap that makes the interception. Boatwright is caught a little bit flat-footed. Roselle from Stone Mountain, Georgia, played at uh, Clarkson High School there. And he comes up with a big play and also adds 23 yards on the return as Dupree. A little delay. It opens up the sideline. An angle on him will be knocked out of bounds. That again is Johnson. It'll save another touchdown here as he bangs him out of bounds and they'll spot it out. Let's see where they finally put it down around the 24-yard line. Boy, Dupree has found his running legs. Cushing and IU do a great job. The right guard and right tackle of Georgia Southern that side to ensure the inside doesn't allow Quincy Powell or Earhart to get off. And, and the crashing by the end, I think it was that time it was Dellinger, he really took the end. So Dupree says, I'll tuck it and keep it, take it up the sideline. First down so far in this ball game. Georgia Southern with six. The Citadel zero so far. Only 148 yards rushing all last week. Dancing his way through the front line and into the secondary is James Williams out of Thomasville as Georgia Southern certainly has their legs under them here in this second period. Sam, the last uh, two or three series when 
when Georgia Southern's come off the field, we've seen Mike Hodges, their fine offensive line coach, down on the sidelines with his offensive line, trying to exhort him into what he wants to get done with that line of scrimmage. They look a little bit more renewed here because Citadel's put up some stiffness ever since some opening scores. It's just shy of a first down at the 19. Dupree tried to option down the line of scrimmage, got the penetration from inside and could not pitch the football out. As coming up to make the stop again here for the Citadel as they get that nice support, and that is Weidman, the right side linebacker from Columbia, South Carolina. Let's go downstairs. Dave Branch has some more information downstairs. Dave? Sam and Jeff, uh, from the Citadel line standpoint, offensively, they're stressing fundamentals and technique. Being a young offensive line, they're having a little trouble dealing with the techniques of the uh, Georgia Southern defensive linemen. On the defensive side of the ball, coach, assistant coach David Salazzo is real pleased, really, with the way they've been playing. They've given up a couple of long runs, but they're causing a bit of havoc at the line of scrimmage. Sam and Jeff. Thank you, Dave. Once again, a 13 and nothing score with Georgia Southern in the lead. They, of course, in their home blue as the Citadel came in as the defending champions and now with a loss on the play by Georgia Southern in the defense for the Citadel again trying to bowl their back and maybe give up only a possibility of a field goal again to stay in this ball game and a touchdown right here would be uh, somewhat difficult because when you have ball control teams as we have in both of these ball games said Jeff it's a little difficult to come from even 13 down I realize but a touchdown here would be very tough before halftime for the Citadel. Well I never got a chance to play the wishbone but I can remember some of those great uh, Oklahoma wishbone teams and it was kind of interesting when they ever got behind which was rare was that play action pass when they were down about 20 points uh, late in the fourth quarter and they're still faking the play action they don't have a comfort behind offense a two minute offense per se, and they, and they don't work on something like that. It's not fundamentally inherent to what they're trying to do with the football from an offensive standpoint. So as these two coaches have a cat and mouse game, that was uh, Salazzo, by the way, David, the defensive coordinator for the Citadel. We'll give you some other scores here in just a moment, including uh, Notre Dame and Michigan, and also Clemson, Florida State, and Alabama, Vanderbilt. Some scores early on for that. Here's the third down play, Dupree. He will not get the yardage he needed again as coming down that line of scrimmage again is Dellinger. And makes the stop there for the Citadel as they continue to not let the option work outside. Dupree's had good success coming out and then coming back on the inside on kind of like a little quarterback delay on it. It's usually defended inside out. Uh, the fullback is the first read you have, and, and then you kind of go down the line. But uh, you're right about that, Sam. It looks like the quarterback's the one who's going to have the run today. Dupree's going to have to take it up inside a lot more. Reed Haley once again will kick this one. It comes from about the 26-yard line. It'll be a 36-yard kick, and it's up, and it is good again. He's perfect for three for three today. So again, after the interception by Roselle, it sets up another big field goal, and it's good as Haley. Puts the Eagles on top of the score of 16 to nothing. 6-26 first half. Bryant Field, where you see Georgia Southern with a 16 to nothing lead on the Citadel. Citadel, the defending Southern Conference champions, losing only to the national champions of last year, Marshall, in their only conference loss. They win 11 and 2, and both Cummings and Mitchum are going to let this one bounce. And the field, it'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. Scoring drive again, and one credit to the Citadel, as you see five plays, 37 yards, and again, a 36-yard field goal by Haley. But Jeff, one credit to their defense, despite a couple of long runs, they've given up the three field goals after the early mistakes, and that's got to be at least a little positive for Coach Charlie Taft there. Well, it's, it's certainly rebounded from what happened last week at Wolford, but you can't keep your defense out there all day. They're out there way too long. This offense is three plays and a punt or three plays and an interception. You, you can't operate offensively that way, nor defensively. They're going to wear out. Citadel with only 22 yards rushing, and now under pressure is Walker throwing to the near sideline, and it was throwing for Sands releasing out of the back field a little too tall for him to handle as pretty good uh, pass support that time coming from Paul Carroll from the inside and I believe they've got Haynes back in there excuse me it's Haynes instead of Walker so Haynes has come back out and I wonder what the meditation uh, period was on the sideline for Haynes while Walker was out there well I probably sat down with Daryl Gass their quarterback coach old quarterback from Georgia Tech and and talked a little bit about what he was doing the first few series maybe get him settled down a little bit but now you said, uh, Sam, it's a different type of game. They're down 16 zip. They, they've got to make some big plays, probably through the pass. It brings up second and 10 after the incompleted pass. Haynes again back at quarterback. The junior from New Smyrna Beach. And another drive, and the ball is on the ground. Alex Nash knocks it away, but the ground, I believe, caused the fumble. And that, of course, would not be a fumble for the Citadel, but Alex Mash 
Again, called by many, maybe one of the best in college football at that position, certainly in one double-A and maybe in all of Division I. He's a good one. Well, he makes a quick move. I think that's Levi Davis, the right guard that he's playing over. A very quick inside move on Levi Davis. He's poised for pass all the way. He's not looking for any kind of run here. And, Dave, and Alex Mash combines a, a great run pursuit, great ability to flow down the line, but also a pretty good pass rusher. That's his, is that his third sack today? It's his third, yes. As a matter of fact, after looking at the replay, he knocked the ball away, so that probably could have been called a fumble just as easy as it was not. A big loss in the play, third down, and a 17-yarder is, again, a procedure penalty, or at least a stop of the play, whistled here by the officials. Clock is stopped at 5.27 to go in the first half of the ball game. By the way, we will be having some festivities at halftime. Dave Branch will be directing traffic down on the field for us. We'll also talk to the commissioner of the Southern Conference, Mr. Wright Waters, as we'll talk about the new member, Georgia Southern, coming in for the first time. Georgia Southern. Let's head it downstairs right now. He's getting an early start here again as Dave Branch. Dave? Well, thanks again, Sam. With us, we have Mr. Frank Cook. He's the director of the Southern Boosters, the Boosters Club here at Georgia Southern. And, and Frank, uh, unfortunately, we reserve. usually only hear the negative point. things about booster clubs, but really, without a solid, well-directed booster club, you can't build a good athletic program, can you? There's no way. It's crucial to the development of our entire athletic program. We sponsor uh, scholarships and recruiting assistance for all 14 sports at Georgia Southern. Our boosters are the backbone of our program. Now, you could not get into the Southern Conference and have all the things you need without your help. Tell us some of the things that the Booster Club has done to get them ready for Southern Conference play. Well, it's a big, it's a joint venture. Of course, Dr. Bucky Wagner and our athletic department was primarily responsible for getting us into Southern Conference. It was a great move on Georgia Southern's part to be able to get in such a prestigious conference as the Southern Conference. It allows us to schedule better. As an independent, it was getting very difficult to do that and fill our schedule. Plus, the Southern Conference is so strong academically as well as athletically, it was a real feather in our cap to get in. Now, the Booster Club, you've been responsible for some of the facilities around the campus, haven't you? We've been very fortunate to have a number of people that participated over the years to help us build facilities, both from a cash standpoint and gift in kind, that has developed this facility as well as others. Frank Cook, director of the Southern Boosters, and we'll send it back upstairs to Sam and Jeff. Thank you, Dave Branch. And as you saw there, it was a Citadel getting a strung out running play there. Haynes, however, had the ball knocked away and fumbled out of bounds. And let's see where they officially spot the football because it was fumbled ahead. Again, they strung it out, and he got nailed from the side. Boy, he did. Inside out, Michael Morris coming down the line to right end. And, and that's kind of an innovative way to try to get a first down. <laughs> uh, it's not what you want to do with a consistent, uh, consistently during the day is to fumble it ahead. But that ball almost reached the sticks. It'll bring up a fourth down just shy. Mash, you saw there with three sacks already this afternoon, a minus 15 yards. As it's going to be punt time again here for the Citadel. They may be coming after Purcell here as he'll get it away about his own eight or nine yard line. Again, what win would have been at his back early on is not there. Nobody comes. They're setting up for the run back. And back to field the football is going to be Roselle. It bounces on the turf, and he's able to get back and make the recovery there for Georgia Southern. So the Eagles will take over first and 10. They'll have it at their own 37-yard line. By the way, while we have a momentary break there, let us remind you in the fourth quarter, Notre Dame leads Michigan 27 to 17. Florida State's all over Clemson 30 to nothing in the third. Also in the third quarter, it's Alabama leading uh, Vanderbilt 14 to 6, a close score there. And one other score ahead for you, North Carolina's on top of Maryland with a score of 14 to 7. Some of the other scores around college football on a gorgeous afternoon here in Statesboro as Tim Stowers and his Eagles of Georgia Southern play their first Southern Conference game. A flag is down as the option to the outside and the quick pitch comes to the far sideline as they try to spring Fraley loose. But a flag will probably bring this one back along the line of scrimmage with five minutes to go before halftime. It looked like Garrett Sizer, the left uh, defensive end, moved just prior to the snap. Would have been a gain of the play of uh, looks like about six, almost seven yards. And it is offsides. Good eyes, my friend, as you spotted that one. And it'll be, probably will not take the uh, penalty, certainly. But we'll take the play instead, but that option will be explained here to Georgia Southern. And Dupree is looking for help from the sidelines. I think that's the very first time that we've seen Georgia Southern go wide with their option uh, and make the pitch this time to Shaft and Fraley. And uh, it forced Citadel that time to have the middle linebacker, Tracy Gamble, to cover Fraley. That's a, that's a mismatch in speed. 
both sides. Defense, repeat first down. So they take the penalty. Instead of taking the six-yard gain, they'll take the five-yard but preserve a down, and it's first and five. Georgia Southern again getting a big break as Mitchum fumbled the opening kickoff. And at 13.50 to go in the first period, a one-yard run by Lester gave it seven to nothing after the kick after was good by Georgia Southern. And then a 27-yard field goal by Reed Haley had them in the lead by the score of 10 to nothing. Back in there running this series is Tyrone Stevens, number 35 from Jessup, Georgia. Went to Wayne County there, and he along with Williams alternating at the fullback. Haley has since added two more field goals, one from 45 and the other from 36, and that accounts for our 16 to nothing score here in the first half of the ball game. Error free ball so far by Georgia Southern. Uh, Citadel's defense been very aggressive. They've been taking some chances, but uh, they need to create something for their offense, maybe a turnover. Tracy Campbell, number 93, making that last stop. He and the other linebackers, Weidman and Young, really being called on here to support. Again from the inside, as this is Dupree. Both of the corners, as we've been watching, Gay along with Cummings, also they've tried with uh, Capelli in there as well. It really had good support of the outside. As you pointed out, that was the first time they've been able to pitch to the outside, maybe because of that good support from the corners. They do a good job, maybe a flash in their corners early and forcing the quarterback to make his, his read much sooner than he'd want to. He'd like to maybe come down the line a little stronger. Stacy Moss, at right tackle that time, he had a, had a death grip on Dillinger's jersey, got away with one, and that forced Dupree back up inside. Dupree gets it up for the first down. You see the numbers on him early this afternoon as he's got 11 rushes already for 57 yards. Of course, much of that came on a 43-yard run earlier in this period. First and 10 for the Eagles. To the left side. No pitch again as Dupree calls his own number again, gets it out for a couple of yards again at two. Second down, eight yards to go, shy of midfield. This can be a little bit of a war of attrition, too. There's a flag down in the field, Sam, where you, uh, you chip away at a team. The defense has been the strength of Citadel so far today, and it keep them on the field, wear them out a little bit. So as we wait the official step off of this penalty, Georgia Southern again with the lead, 16 to zip. At a first down play, looks as if it's going to be a face mask on the run, or at least the end of it, by Dupree. By the way, Jeff Van Note will be leaving here and heading back to Atlanta. you got the Falcons and the Saints. Incidental face mask against the defense. Still be first down. So a first down, a five-yard penalty on the incidental face mask. Let's see if we can pick it up here, Jeff. Well, you're seeing Dupree, and it's Weidman and Mikey Young. Mikey just it wraps his hand around his head and, and accidentally grabs it. It wasn't intention. Here's a little flat zone pass thrown to the near sideline to right. Right run headlong into Cummings as he barrels his way down. Almost enough for another first down. Shy of a 42. They needed to get to the 43, so he should have enough. Now they back it up a little bit. And the officials will have to make the decision if it's a first down or not. Again, I was making the point that Atlanta and New, New Orleans playing in the Georgia Dome tomorrow could be a pretty good football game. Couldn't oh, it'll be a it'll be a real good football game. <laughs> These two teams don't like each other. They play each other twice a year, and it's a great rivalry. There'll be a lot of Saints fans there. It's a sold-out game, and and the Falcons are very disappointing in their first game uh, last week against Detroit, especially from an offensive standpoint. They need to they, they can't afford to go out to San Francisco 0 and 2. Tim Stowers watching from the near sideline as they bring the change across the field to check for the measurement, and it's going to be just shy by about three or four inches, so it'll be a second down play here after another little uh, pitch and run play, this time coming out to right. By the way, on many of these uh, Sports South Network stations, consult your television listings, you'll also see the defending national champions thundering herd of Marshall. They'll go against Murray State. That's a later ball game, kickoff time at 6 o'clock as the defending champs go for another victory. And right now this man, Charlie Tapp, is hoping for his first of the year. It's an uphill battle down 16 to nothing here in Statesboro. Hasn't had much luck here at Paulson Stadium, losing two earlier playoff games to the Eagles. Second down, short yardage. Big center over the ball is Chapin. Scott has been having some injury problems, 6'2", 252, and a senior. And now a timeout's going to be whistled, and I believe going to be charged to the Citadel. They didn't like their defensive set. Certainly on this short yardage situation with only uh, 3.29 left to go in the first half. Sam, those two uh, losses by the Citadel down here, too, in 88 and 90. And you've got to remember, I think, that they were, those were two of Charlie Taft's better football teams. Those were ranked uh, in the top 20, 14 and 15 in the country when they, when they came down here and played Georgia Southern. And that's uh, a credit to, first of all, the record that they have here at Paulson Stadium, but also to the kind of program that Georgia Southern has developed 
they are they are just tough to beat, especially here at home. Well, of course, that man Tim Stowers you saw a moment ago, his ball club won 31 to nothing the last time they met here in 1990 and held the Citadel to only eight yards total in the entire second half to win at 31 zip. Dave was talking to uh, uh, the Citadel coaches a little bit about working on their techniques and on their offense. Uh, uh, this is something that uh, once you get into the haze in the barn theory, once once you're here at the, the game, you've got to have that stuff down as as pat and cold as you can. You want to refer to to some of the basics. If you're getting beat by a guy like Nash, uh, you're not sure how to handle him, except maybe you have to start double teaming him. I know that just about the time I got real good with my techniques, I got too old to use them. <laughs> and uh, you don't want to let that happen in a football game. <laughs> He take a good look there again at Dave Salazzo again the defensive line coach as he's really had some pretty good line play here today as the handoff goes to the first back through and they get an easy first down out of this no doubt about Williams crashing. Well what a great great uh, advantage this is with Stevens and Williams able to alternate that fullback and that flex bone they've got great great uh, success up the middle and just kind of beats down that Citadel middle of the line. Both of those backs too, Williams and Stevens as does Sands uh, for the Citadel all making their yards between the tackles, but they have some speed once they get into the second level to the linebackers where they might break it. Still no first downs for the Citadel. Nine so far here for Georgia Southern as they operate on a first down play and goes nowhere. Center of the line again, er, uh, Earnhardt, again Jake from uh, Lawrenceville in Georgia. Makes the defensive stop here. Just a good hard blue collar worker we're told by Coach Charlie Taft says he doesn't do anything special. He just stays at home where he's supposed to be, and certainly he did that time to make the stop for no gain at all. Built a great program, Coach Taft, at the Citadel. They don't get the greatest athletes, the best that they're recruiting with, but they get good team guys. Back to throw, Dupree. Pressure's on, lets it go. Got a man open on the near sideline. That's Fraley. Fraley tried to spin out of a tackle and does down inside the five to about the four and a half yard line. And down there defending is uh, Cummings. Cummings from Atlanta, Georgia. George High School was there to prevent. And right now, Fraley is down and hurt. After he made that spin, he really came down hard. Well, this is a nice job by Joe Dupree. He looks off Micah Young. Micah Young is the linebacker over here to the right side. He, he's covering Fraley, uh, Shaft and Fraley coming down the right sideline. A mismatch in speed. Linebacker against a, a slot back with the speed of Fraley. But it's all for naught. A flag is down back up field. So Fraley may have taken all of this punishment for nothing as it turns out. Good play. At least they've let uh, the Citadel know that that long pass is still very much there. They scored on a 74 yarder last week. Dupree to Dawson. Fraley's up running back. You hear the applause in the background. By the way, the students are not in school as of yet here at Georgia Southern. They start classes on Wednesday. Holding on the offense. Second down. So the second down play and uh, almost like a road map needed for a first down here as the ball is way back at the 42 yard line. They've got to go all the way to the 31 of Citadel. You see the numbers starting to mount up on the Eagles now 48 yards to 35 both getting penalized four times today. Dupree throwing against the grain and he threw that one pretty well with the catch is Willis but he caught it out of bounds. Or does he catch it good. No they do make the reception at both feet in. Darren Willis. Now they bring it back. Well, they are bringing it back. I'm sorry. I, I'm looking at the, the official. They're marking <laughs> the spot, but he must be overruled. Nice blocking by, by Williams on Dellinger. This is a well-delivered football. He's trying to keep his feet dragging him in there. Uh, maybe the feet were out after the catch is made. He has to catch the ball out of bounds and maybe pulls his feet then. So it's still third down, still 27 yards now as they hand off through the middle. And they're trying to hit that little quick opener, and trying his darndest is James Williams. Dragging tacklers along, but all it'll do is to give the punter, Thatcher, a little bit more room to get that football out of there. As they'll punt on this fourth down play with only a minute 52 left to play in the first half. And the grind out football of Georgia Southern in the lead by the score of 16 to zip. It'll be very interesting to be a fly on the wall of Charlie Taft and his staff at halftime to try to figure out what they're going to do. Here's a quick lineup as Citadel's trying to change their defense and return team. They're coming after the punt. They almost got it. Thatcher just barely got it out of there. And it's fielded rather dangerously, I might add, by Citadel at the 25-yard line. Make it the 20. 
And that's where they'll take over first and ten. As back there was Dan Johnson, as you saw, already see a little pushing and shoving going on. 31 yards. Factor getting that out. I'm not sure that ball was not tapped just a little on its way out of there. And Calvin Atkins uh, made a strong, strong effort to get in there and make the block. But uh, pretty good play by Georgia Southern to, to put their punt team out there at the last second. They're on the closest sideline, the hash mark closer to them. Citadel had to come all the way across the field. Well, coming back in as the quarterback is Walker. Walker, who had played a, a series early on while Haynes was on the sideline, and now Walker doesn't like what he sees, and he's going to call a timeout. I'm not sure he has all his people out there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They do not have 11 on the field right now. So the problem for Citadel had been compounded early on by some mistakes that gave Georgia Southern an opening 10 to nothing lead. And now their defense that has given up only three field goals since that time have really held their own. And quite obviously, it's been an opportunity for the offense to try to get something down, and they just haven't grasped it today. As Citadel has just been held certainly in check here by this Georgia Southern defense. Eight starters back, though, from last year. Two of the best uh, against the score last year with these two ball clubs in the Southern Conference. Both of them do a great job of keeping the score down, and that is the, the key statistic in defense. You can talk about tackles and All-Americans and, and this on third down conversion, but if you, you don't let them score, or you, you let them score minimally, that's just the best statistic to have on a defensive football team. They were first and third in the country last year. Georgia Southern being first and Citadel being third. Neither one of them plays shabby defense. Assistant head coach Mike Hodges, as we pointed out, uh, just the second that that offense is off the field, they go right back to work trying to figure out how to get some points on the board. From the touchdown standpoint, they have not been able to do so other than the short one they got with Lester from one yard out. Citadel plays a 4-3 defense, but they... They stack their linebackers a lot of times behind the defensive linemen, and so the blocking assignments right away are not easy to, to key in on, especially if they shade one side or the other, depending on which way your play's going. It, it's not a technical thing, but it, it, it draws some confusion among your offensive linemen about, well, do I have this guy, or is that guy over far enough where maybe I need to take him? And that a little bit of doubt can hurt. A huge advantage in the rushing so far for Georgia Southern has been one of the biggest problems the Citadel has had. As Walker again with the option down the right side. Turns it up for a slight gain. The clock rolls at a minute 18 left to play. Let's see if they air one out here. Or oh, the Citadel. By the way, Georgia Southern jumps from the fire of playing the defending champion Citadel today as Georgia Southern goes to Marshall next week. That'll be a great ball game. And the Citadel also has to go back on the road where they're trying to nurse a six-game winning streak on the road right now. They'll play at Western Carolina against the Catamounts. So two of the forecasted better teams in the Southern Conference in Marshall and Western Carolina hosting these two ball clubs next week. Second down, good gain in the play of about five and a half yards by Walker. Won't get that much this time. As absolutely no place to run to again, Charlie Burt from Winter Haven, Florida, number 57, was the first to get there, and guess who gave him some help? You got it, Alex Mash. Well, you want to option one, and maybe you want to block the other, but you, you, you've got to do one or the other here. Left side of that Citadel line, and that is uh, Derek Bears and, uh, and Shane Stevens, the returning guard, the only starter returning for Citadel. They, they've got to do something with Mash inside, and then maybe they can get to the option on Burt. You know what's kind of scary about the other teams in the Southern Conference with the new guys on the block now, Southern uh, Georgia Southern. Uh, Six out of the last eight years, the one AA championship has been won by a member of the Southern Conference. The current members, Georgia Southern, not as members of the conference, won in 85-86 and repeated in 89-70. and 70. In the meantime, they also got a championship in 88 from Furman. And, of course, last year, Marshall came up with a title. Only Northeast Louisiana in 87 and Youngstown State in 91 interrupted that run by the Southern Conference. And interesting enough, they beat the defending champion Marshall in each one of those in the championship run. But six of the last eight years, Southern Conference has dominated in one double-A football. Yeah, if they're not winning the, the, the one double-A, they're runners-up for the most part. This is the best football conference uh, in one double-A. There's no doubt about it. There, there's some great football being played at this level. And, and it's interesting when they match up against uh, the Division I. Charlie Taft's had some exceptional success against Division I teams. One in particular, Arkansas and Army last year. A couple of big wins for him. Here's that pivot move by Walker on the third down play. He won't have enough for the first down, but he fights hard for it. Georgia Southern quickly calls a timeout. They want to stop the clock and at least get their hands on the football one more time as the Citadel will have to kick the football away. And one of the real problems that I see early in this first half is this pursuit of this Southern defense. So they're not giving this young offensive team 
of Citadel any time at all uh, to allow a play to develop. Uh, and especially if you're going to do a little counter option as the, the quarterback did at Cantroy Walker that time, it, it, just, it just doesn't work when you've got great pursuit. You're not fooling them. You've got to gash them with some kind of big play. They might really have to go to the throwing game exclusively. Well, a fumble recovery and an interception, too, with the turnovers today for the Citadel, directly resulting in 10 points so far. And you add two more field goals onto that, and that's our 16 to nothing score here at halftime. So as you go into the dressing room, of course, the Citadel trying desperately to find out what they can do offensively against Georgia Southern. And Southern a little bit frustrated as well because even though they're leading 16 to nothing, yes, they've added field goals. They've got to be disappointed. The running game, even though it has had spurts, is not able to run over the Citadel here early on in this ball game. No, they haven't really established anything. They've established one that they have the, uh, the ability to make a big play out of Dupree or one of their big fullbacks, Williams and Stevens. But other than that, they really haven't established any consistent type of offensive attack in, in, on the ground. Purcells will be punting this football away for the Citadel. Again, with 28 seconds, Georgia Southern will have maybe a catch block. They come after it, and it'll be Georgia Southern's football. They'll try to advance it for the score. Now it's up for grabs, and the Citadel will take it now. Did the ball change possession? Getting in for the block is going to be Richardson. Richardson's been all around that kicker. Now did Georgia Southern get uh, possession of the football and run it and then fumble, and that looks like what they're going to call it is the Citadel will have it. And we'll have it a first and ten to go, and they saved themselves an opportunity of giving it back. Again, after it was blocked, Georgia Southern tried to advance it. They fumbled it, and the Citadel came back up with the football. Let's watch it again. Richardson runs free. The snap's a little bit low. I've seen that before, uh, personally. And the, the snap's just a little bit low, and Richardson does a great job of blocking it. And then, and I, I didn't catch it who had the ball. It was it, it might have been uh, um, Alonzo Harris. We might see it from this angle, Jeff. 81, I, I think it is 81. And his guys are helping him. In, <laughs> and in helping him, it looks as if Eric Thinkman pulls the ball loose from him. It's like, don't help me, guys. <laughs> oh. Citadel now just wants to run out the clock as they dodge the major bullet there. And they'll wind it down for the final play of this half. And that's the way we'll conclude here at the halftime break. So again, the Citadel, early mistakes, giving Georgia Southern a quick 10-0 lead in the first six minutes of the ball game. They've held off for the most part, giving only two more field goals up. And it'll be Tim Stowers and the Eagles heading for the dressing room with a 16-0 halftime lead. Other side of the coin, of course, Charlie Taff and company will try to figure out what to do offensively as they'll head for their dressing room as well as they'll discuss it here during the halftime break. Half Coach, your defense really came to play today, but that young offense is struggling. Well, the defense, uh, we're lucky. The defense playing well enough to at least keep us in the game, but I don't think we've made a first down. We're not blocking anybody. Or they're playing one defense. They're lining up in one defense, and we got missed assignments. Uh, we got, uh, it's very frustrating. We got to get this young offense to some confidence, believe in themselves a little bit, but it's hard to get confidence if you don't go out there and have a little success. So we're fighting a double-edged sword right now, and uh, all we can do is just keep going. But. Uh, we're we're uh, not functioning very well on offense. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Good luck in the second half. Coach Taft, back upstairs to you, Sam and Jeff. Thank you very much, Dave, and thanks to Charlie Taft for spending a couple of minutes with us on his way to the dressing room. As you see, they're proud of their Georgia Southern, and the boosters have turned out in pretty good numbers this afternoon on a beautiful Saturday. They've been entertained. 16 to zip at half. We're back in a moment. Dr. Nicholas Henry, the president of Georgia Southern University. And Dr. Henry, naturally it's a big day for the football program, but it's really a big day for the whole school, isn't it? It sure is, David. Being in the Southern Conference is a, is a real treat for us, and we've just been delighted with the experience so far. Now tell us, when you have a football program like this, and of course entering a conference like this, what does it do for the student body? Oh, it gives the student body a renewed sense of pride. This is a very uh, proud student body anyway. We played a game here in, a, in Hurricane Hugo once, which we came to be known as the Hugo Bowl. And they, uh, they had a wonderful time, and they continue to support us uh, all throughout the year. We have great students. Now, the university has really grown. Uh, yes, in 1985, it had an enrollment of about 6,800. Right. And since then, it's grown to over 14,000, probably the fastest growing university in the country. What do you attribute that to? We attribute it to giving a very good experience to the undergraduate student, particularly freshmen. Actually, the U.S. Department of Education has said we're the fastest growing in America, so we think the data are accurate. And certainly probably doesn't help the fact that in 85, that was the first year you won your first national championship. We think that may have had something to do with it. Stairs Dave Branch with Tim Stowers. 
We got Coach Tim Stowers here, and Coach, you told me the biggest thing you earned, learned from Coach Irk Russell was to have your guys ready to play on Saturday, and boy, they were ready from the very first kickoff. We were, we were ready to play his first ever Southern Conference football game. Our players were excited about playing. Our coaches did a super job of preparing. We've been looking forward to this day for a long time. However, the first half is history, so we got to play the second half like it's nothing to nothing. That's right. Coach, thanks for being with us. Good luck in the second half. I appreciate it. All right. Sam and Jeff, take it away. Hey, but it is time for the second half, and let's take a look at some of the halftime uh, of the first half of the highlights. Weren't a lot, of course, after the first six minutes, and, of course, after a fumble recovery by Thigpen for Georgia Southern, the opening kickoff. It was just a little run to the end zone, and no problem for Lester on this one. Well, after this play, you saw Citadel covering this option a lot better. That's about the two times, and this is the first time to score. They were only able to get outside. Defensively for Georgia Southern, it's been all this guy, Mash. He's been a real force. Here's a guy that uh, Citadel's going to have to pay a lot more attention to in the second half. He's not a guy that you can angle block. you gotta, you got to square him up, and you might have to use two people a lot of times. He doesn't seem to go for much misdirection. One of the reasons that uh, the Citadel does not have any first downs has been Mash. Well, look at the other numbers right now. No passing yardage for either ball club. And the rushing right now, that's it. 157 to only 42. Neither club really having that great a game from on the stat sheet. But again, an opportunity for them to get the second half going. Right now, the crowd just starting to file back into their seats here for the start of the second half. The Citadel out, and uh, as is Georgia Southern. And I would imagine there was a great deal of uh, gnashing of teeth over in the Citadel locker room as they want to try to get their offense going. Before we get to that, let me pass on a couple other scores for you. Notre Dame now leads Michigan late in the ballgame, 27-17. to 17. It is Alabama 17-6 to 6 over Vanderbilt. Florida State now 42 to nothing over Clemson. And North Carolina has a lead over Maryland, 35-21. Also another Southern Conference team Appalachian State now leads Liberty by the score of 14 to 3 in the second half East Tennessee State is hosting Mars Hill today no score on that one this afternoon and later tonight on Sports South don't forget it's Marshall against Murray State they start at 6 p.m. tonight here on Sports South well it'll be kickoff time as the Citadel will be kicking off to Georgia Southern to get it underway here in the second half as the fans are literally just kind of laying back. Oh, uh, how, by the way, did you have the uh, concession on the uh, Suntown oil today? You didn't get that, did you? No, I wish I had. It's a sun-drenched day down here. And, and when they put a stadium like this, it's a very picturesque stadium, uh, Glen Bryant Field, Paulie's Paulson Stadium, uh, sitting in a little bowl here. People can sit up on the, on the grass, and uh, it kind of reminds you of old uh, Ivy League football a lot of times, a very casual approach to it. And this is a great viewing stadium for everybody, whether in a seat or up on the, the sideline. Jeff Tran will get the first opportunity to put his foot to the football for the Citadel. And with the reception at the two, coming straight ahead is going to be Chris Wright. And Wright brings it all the way out as it'll be excellent field position for Georgia Southern. They'll spot it down at the 29-yard line. We'll have a first down and 10 yards to go. Georgia Southern will stay pat with their starting lineup of Joe Dupree, who comes out. Dupree in the first half, as you saw, did not have any passing yardage, but his offense ran well on the ground. Williams and Stevens will alternate in the backfield. You see number 36, Williams, will line up at fullback. Wright and Fraley will be in the slots on either side. Also, Dupree had a good day running already for 59 yards. He finally makes that pitch. This is Wright. Nice move as he takes it down to near the 35-yard line. One thing about Fraley and Wright, they are dangerous when they get outside and turn those corners. Those are the two speed guys, Fraley and Wright. And here you see Wright. He's the option man coming on the way around. Dietrich Cummings, the cornerback, has a chance. And he had a chance earlier in a pass to Wright to force the action. He really respects Wright's speed, though. And you're not going to see many guys do a 360. Uh, Barry Sanders, maybe the only guy in football I've seen to do, seen seen do that in the last few years. Not any college guys. Micah Young, the inside linebacker, made the stop there for the Citadel. A gain of six, second down and four. Back to throw. Dupree looking for that completion. He's got it over the middle. Intended for Dawson. Knocked down by Cummings. A diving try for the intercept by Self, but it was not to be, and it goes incomplete. You may recall Dupree completed that beautiful pass down the far sideline earlier to Fraley. But it was all called back because of a holding, so zero in the passing category for either quarterback in the first half. Yeah, trying to go into double coverage, too. Pretty good coverage by Dietrich Cummings underneath. He had Aaron Self, the free safety, coming over, and pressure being applied by Mike Weidman, the uh, outside linebacker. Start is across the front for the Citadel. Dellinger along with Earhart, along with Powell and Sizer. Those are the guys making up the front four. Linebackers are Young, Gamble, and Weidman. 
While it's Gay and Cummings on the corner, his flags will run this one out on a procedure against Georgia Southern. Strong safety is Johnson. The free safety is Self. And again, we pointed out that the linebackers are the guys that do most of the damage. And Tim Stowers watched his ball club get heavily penalized here early on, and it has cost them dearly to really have this ball game well in hand. Well, these are non-athletic penalties, too, where uh, all you've got to do is know the snap count, and this is what really drives coaches wild. They'll take a holding penalty. They'll take a clipping penalty every now and then. But uh, non-athletic, where all you've got to do is concentrate what you're doing. This, this runs them out of their, their minds. Cushing and Glover are the two tackles. Stevens and Ayub are the guards, and uh, Shapen, number 51, is the center. As here's Dupree throwing to the near sideline, having to come back and try for the diving try. Was uh, Dawson. At that time, it was Dupree getting some heavy pressure, and he got it from the inside. And right now, that was Gamble to put the pressure on him. Now the Citadel defense, they've got a pretty good crowd over there starting to give them a nice round of applause for their great effort here to start the third period. A lot of uh, Citadel fans in the, this part of Georgia. There's a number of Georgia players, I think 12 or 13 Georgia players on the Citadel roster. Here's the first punt of the second half by Thatcher. And he booms a beauty out of there. Cummings will watch this one bound on the turf. See what kind of hop it's going to take. And Georgia Southern will down the football right there. And the first man over to put his hands on the football, number 55, Scott Davis, out of Powder Springs here in Georgia. And it's first and down for the Citadel. Let's see if the halftime did anything to revamp their offense as the Bulldogs go to the attack for the first time in the third period. Future pulling guards there, trying to figure out where exactly he's going to try to run out there. 16 and up for Georgia Southern. A good crowd filed in here on a Saturday afternoon, their first conference game ever. And the Citadel with their first possession of the football. Let's see what they do here in the second half. They're going to go nowhere as Walker again will start the second half for the Citadel. And pursuit from the backside, that once again is Paul Carroll, number 43. Had a lot of inside help that time, Morris. And Morris, the young man from uh, Adele, Georgia, a junior. Had one sack against uh, Savannah State, had four tackles in that ball game as Walker. Kind of a tough start for him. Nine uh, rushes and only uh, positive two yards so far. That was a real nice play, though, by Charlie Burt, the right defensive end. He's in a position, of his body position is taking away both the pitch and the inside run from Cantrell Walker. Citadel has broken the wishbone only a couple of times so far this afternoon, and they stay in it right now. The option pitch to the outside, and again, they string it down to the line of scrimmage and maybe a yard gain. As that time, they pitched it outside, and there was really no place to run for Little, number 38. And option number 38, Well, you can watch Paul Carroll, their fine inside linebacker. He does a run through. He's able to get Cantrell Walker from behind. Still gets the pitch off, and nobody puts a block on. Here's Everett Sands. Uh, he's out in front of the play. He's got to get Burt, or else he's got to get the corners forcing one or the other. That time, he doesn't get either one. He's almost got just, good, if nothing else, just something to detain him for a moment to get him to turn the corner. That time, Charlie Burt really came out wide, and you saw the support coming. Number 18, Sean Austin. Third down. They'll need seven to the Bulldogs here, and their offense sputtering at best in the first half. Back to throw Walker. The left-hander cranks it up, and it's going to be intercepted. Running the ball back is Austin. To the 30. Down the sidelines and out of bounds, and a flag is down. You can see the clothesline tackle on the far side, but Georgia Southern way back up field will have one, two, three, four flags on the field. Boy, this ball never should have been thrown. He's got great protection, Cantrell Walker. He can sit back there and, and, and pick out his man, but he doesn't get it over the linebackers. He's got, he's got to get this ball just a little bit deeper over Sean Austin or I think it's Darius Dawson over on that side too. And here's Dawson getting a little clip. That's what pulls the ball back after the interception. But this ball's got to be lofted over those short linebackers. So the mistakes by the Citadel continuing to cost them another look at this. And again, just as Jeff pointed out, you can see not a receiver. All of them had to go downfield as Boltwright was the man he was attended for, and he wasn't even close. And you see the stop made uh, on the sidelines. And again, the clip had already occurred before that uh, stop was made as Everett Sands were the ones that knocked him out. Officials now want to officially get what all of the flags might mean. There were four <laughs> separate flags out there. Looked like a laundry day here at uh, Georgia Southern. Everybody has a, has a decision know, to make on this. We don't have the mic on, but they're saying, you know, that pizza at Domino's is pretty good, <laughs> but you know, Little Caesars is just down the road. You know what I mean? That's how they argue. <laughs> 
you know, in the future, th th it's all going to be done this game by by robot. You know, they'll have computers out there and lasers marking the uh, down and distance and whatnot. They're going to phase these. They'll do that out. soon. Yeah, have the little beeps and all that oh, kind of sure. thing. Sure. Jeff, what does it feel like to be able to uh, kind of enjoy a Monday and Tuesday with having not having to put your body back together after 18 years in the NFL? Well, there's so much intensity, I think, in coaching and playing football. That's where the, the, the intensity lies in this game. This is uh, talking about it and looking at it is uh, is kind of light, I think, and uh, more than anything. And and uh, relatively, I feel relatively very good right now. I could, my doctor tells me to lose 10 pounds every time I see him once <laughs> a year, but uh, one of these days he'll get me down that weight. So again, off-settling penalties appear to be the in indication. Uh, Mr. Landis will give us a full ex explanation of the calls here. Again, they are looking at the 45-yard line as one of the areas of the infraction. And again, they're still kind of sorting it all out. And of course, the fan would like to know what the heck's going on is Tim Stowers on one side and Charlie Taff on the other. Mr. Landis will tell us. <laughs> He's going to use the silent version. Let's take a look at it again. This is the run back. Well, you're going to see Austin get yanked out of bat. You can see the clip here by Darius Dawson right there. And that's the first penalty. That's a clip. The one down the field here is where, and that's Everett Sands. He's face masking Austin and, and pulling him out of bounds. And it's kind of a vicious jerk because of, uh, I think, the lightweight nature of Austin and the fact that he does grab up around there. So they finally put the football down after marching it all over this football field for about two minutes now. And it's at the 45-yard line, and Georgia Southern, after all of this, was diagnosed. And they stepped off one penalty, and then they stepped off another, but it's still going to be a first and 10 for Georgia Southern, despite the fact that both teams were penalized. 12.05 to go in the third period, still 16-zip. But Georgia Southern in the league from the first half. Dupree still quarterbacking Georgia Southern. He has Charlie Bostic as a possibility of a man coming in behind him. If uh, Coach Tim Styers should use that luxury, and nice luxury indeed is... Bostic, of course, the starting quarterback of a year ago for this club. You think of of wishbone teams or beer teams, all the linemen firing out. Look at uh, Georgia Southern pull their backside guard, Franklin Stevens. He makes the cut on Tracy Gamble, and if Joe Dupree can keep his feet, he's got a bigger pickup. Support from the inside of the linebackers. Here's that little look-in pass. It's good to Willis. Willis has enough for a first down and then goes out of bounds at the 43-yard line. And you got to believe that wishbone, Jeff, that little pass and that little look-in is going to be there all day long, isn't it? You're right. The corners have got to lay off just a little bit, and they've got to honor the run for a second. So it sets up the the run by, the, the little hitch and, and go, where he can hitch up and then maybe just race by the cornerback if he's reading the option or if he's reading the short pass, Sam. One of the things that Georgia Southern has enjoyed in this year's football team is better strength. Also, they beefed up from normally an average about 250 in the front line to 267 this year. Dupree down the line of scrimmage on the option to the 40. And again, he's upset because he sidestepped the main man. That's Gamble and then lost his footing again. They may look at a little set of shoes for him before this day is over. A lot of times players wear cleats that are they feel very comfortable with. Maybe not ones that are suited for this field. And uh, and he certainly has practiced on it enough and played on it before. But he's had a little tr trouble with his footing, and this is the second time. You can see, look at the look at the feet, how his feet slide up from under him as he's trying to plant and maybe make a cutback. Second down and seven yards to go after a gain of three. They give it once again to one of their fullbacks, and that's James Williams out of Thomasville, Georgia. Gaining 47 last week and trying to add to his total. 737 last year. Scored three touchdowns as the starter from the fullback, and the wishbone are the flex bone they run here at Georgia Southern. Like Aaron Self coming up on that tackle that time, and that's what Georgia Southern would like to do, draw in that secondary, force them to make tackles at the secondary level, and that uh, exposes their passing game. They might get a receiver one-on-one. -on -one. Here's that problem area for both ball clubs. The third down and a blind from the blind side, and a great uh, charge again by Garrick Sizer. Just as Dupree was trying to let that football go, it is boom, and down he goes. Sizer really came like a freight train. Well, he comes free, and that's because Joey Cushing and and looks like Chris Wright on the backside. They just turn loose here at Sizer. You can't let him go free like that. And uh, you got to remember, he's playing with a bruised finger on his index. They don't need to get him injured right now. Charles Bosick, I'm sure, would come in and do a very capable job, but he's pretty cold. Well, they're going to go for it on fourth down. They need three, do the Eagles of Georgia Southern. 9.55 to go. 
Let's see what is going to happen here with his fourth down play. Man in motion. Dupree and rambles to the near side, and he's not going to get away from the gamble. The middle linebacker who puts him down for a loss, and the defense of the Citadel trying desperately to give their offense a little lift, and they've done so on the fourth down play. Boy, Gamble, cat quickness out of there, out of Manning, uh, Manning that is, South Carolina, makes a huge play as the Citadel, down 16-0, will have the ball. Statesboro, Georgia, is this man, Charlie Taft, but maybe things can change as Citadel has had problems with the offense, and they'll try to get it going. Walker stays at quarterback, and they give it to the first back, too, as they try to continue to pound that middle and find if there's anything happening there. It is Jerby, Travis Jerby, number 32, Isles of Palm, South Carolina, Wando High School is the running back. He replaces Sands in the lineup. They unstack slowly. By the way, we mentioned it was 79 at kickoff. The wind, by the way, has started to pick up again and right in the face of the Citadel. It's as they're going right to left as you look at it here, heading towards the north end zone. But the temperature down on the field, uh, much, much warmer than that 79 would indicate. It's a warm afternoon here in Statesboro. Gain of two on the play, second down and eight. 9-12 to go in the third period. Still a 16-0 lead by Georgia Southern. Walker drops again, and guess what? It is Mash that tattoos him to the turf here as Mash gets his fourth sack of this ball game. He has had a monumental game already. Let's take a look at the big guy again. Well, I don't know who does the voting, uh, but uh, I would give this guy defensive player of the week so far for the Southern Conference. Yep. The center, Sean Lyons, unable to get the back block. That's the block back, so the, the right guard is able to pull. Shane Stevens would be, or Levi Davis would be able to pull. He turns him free, and he, once again, another play for a loss for Alex Mash. By the way, Andre Worley of Furman was the defensive player of the week last week in the win by Furman over Connecticut. Here back to throw a third down play and running with the ball is Walker. Boy, he does create when he gets himself on the open field. He was cut down by Charlie Burt, was one that tripped him up. Then he fell into the waiting hands that time of uh, Darius Dawson, Dawson number, number five. Not enough for a first down, brings up a fourth down, and now the Citadel will have about two and a half to three yards needed for a first down, and if they're going to gamble, I'm not sure this is the place they'd like to do so in the third period. So far today, Georgia Southern has played them straight up, at least when they've been threatening to pass. Georgia Southern hadn't been blitzing. They've been playing with their defensive line, dropping off into a zone, but it really opens it up if a guy like Cantrell Walker with his ability scrambles. Charlie Taff is trying to call a timeout on a fourth down play, and now the uh, head linesman is finally got the call. So a little inexperience for... The Citadel is again from the sideline. Charlie Taft looked like he was a traffic cop over there trying to call a timeout, and nobody on the field was paying any attention to him. That may be one of his problems right now, as it's still 16 to nothing, but the Citadel on the fourth down looked like they were going to go for it, and they may have had a second guess. Well, we'll be back and see if indeed they dial in another play. Right now, they've got to dial something special. Georgia Southern leads it on their home field in Statesboro, 16 to zip. Along also with Dave Branch on the field as we're here for Southern Conference football. And the Eagles of Georgia Southern lead it 16 to zip. But now the playbook has been dialed into a very special page for Citadel. Fourth and two yards to go at their own 49-yard line. With the play is Walker, the quarterback. They give it to the first back through Sands. He gets to midfield, but not much further. They'll spot him about the 49 and a half-yard line. They'll have to bring the chains out, and this will have to be either a friendly spot for the Citadel or unfriendly <laughs> for Georgia Southern because that's what it's going to come down to. Yeah, and the, one of the strange things, they gave Georgia Southern at least two looks at that defense, uh, at their offensive set because they went back in the huddle right prior to that snap again. And so, uh, you know, you, you think that Georgia Southern, if they've scouted them enough, if they've seen this formation before in, in a, a, a tough four, fourth and short or third and short, uh, they were, were all defense or at least well ready to it, what, what they figured they would run. So the chain and the spot, it's a first down for the Citadel. So they gamble on a fourth down play. And this time, their fourth down try pays off as they just get enough. And now Tim Styers looking for the sideline as the first first down of the afternoon. And again, the spot of the football, you see it there with only one first down compared to 10 for Georgia Southern. Well, we heard Tim Stowers say at the beginning of the half, we've got to play a full second half. And this game is certainly not out of perspective at 16 zip. And and now maybe Citadel will show a little bit of signs on offense. Walker with a first and 10 to go at the 49-yard line. He fumbles the ball. It's picked up and grabbed, and they'll lose some yardage back to the 45. Again, Walker with that great penetration from Georgia Southern. One man there is Morris, number 91, and also in there is Brian Sellers, 
who created the activity for Georgia Southern's defense. Well, Alex Mash is the one me getting all the recognition, but Brian Sellers, wow. transfer that they got out of uh, Ohio State, does a great job of, of separating the center and guard gap, the left guard, Shane Stevens, the center, Sean Lyons, he just splits the gap and is able to make the penetration and, and almost cause another big turnover. Heads up play by Citadel picking that ball up. Number 20 was Splintum. That's Michael coming out of St. Michael, South Carolina, that tried to make something happen out of it. They lose four at second down and 14. Walker again faced to the first back through, keeps it on the option to the 49, still on his move as he spins around. Well, let's take a look and see what Dave Branch is up to. Dave? Walker. Coming from both sides of the field, this time on the Eagles line, on this Citadel drive, the defense had just been warned to watch out for Walker scrambling, and about two plays later, you saw, he keep that, keep him, you saw him keep that drive alive with a scramble. Now, uh, previously on the Eagle offense, uh, that sack and, and tackle for a loss was caused by some miscommunication on the front line, particularly they're looking for Miguel Ayub to clearly dictate what signals are gonna happen, and Jeff, as you know, communication very important on that offensive line. Third down, 11 yards to go here for Georgia Southern. They're in the wishbone, and back goes Walker again. Here comes Mash. Walker gets away from him, and then gets nailed. Coming up to support was Austin, Sean Austin, number 18. And over the top was going to be Morris that almost took his head off. By the way, let me back up and give credit where credit is due on that first down run. It was not Sands, number 34, but instead number 32 was Jervy. Travis Jervy got that first down for the Citadel. So when they are reviewing this tape we did catch ourselves a little late and I apologize for that right now the Citadel with uh, Purcells getting ready to kick it away they will not take any further gambles with a fourth and long yard at this time so they'll kick again and this time he hangs one high not as deep as he'd like as Dawson will field at the 11 bumps into his own man as a matter of fact maybe actually almost tackled by his own man back there <laughs> Oh, is that the race? Dancing for the other to lead in a dance. I'm not sure, but nonetheless, Dawson is knocked down. He's upset. Alex Mash trying to hold him up a little <laughs> bit. Uh, he, Alex Mash is down and say, listen, there's too many of them. That's uh, right. Stop it right now. First and 10 for Georgia Southern with a 16-0 lead. And with 4.53 left to play here in the third period, a 36-yard punt that time by Purcell. He averaged 41 in four kicks. You know, I made mention to... Of course, uh, Coach Taft last night that, uh, yeah, Pur uh, Purcell had seven kicks. He said, no, he didn't. Well, he does today. He's had a lot of time to kick the football away today. And off straight up the middle. They're coming once again with number 35 on the offense for Georgia Southern. Uh, number 36 and 35 run the alternate series. This is Stevens. Williams is the other man that runs at that spot. And Stevens, who had a 30-yard run in last week's game, 77 yards, picks up. About six here, so it's second down and four yards to go. 21-yard line for the Eagles. Yeah, the thing about having a big fullback in this type of offense, six foot 230, is he's able to break some tackles. And he's got a little bit of speed once he gets to that second level. He was a sprinter in high school. Dupree with the option. He likes to go ahead and keep it again. And just as he tries to make that cut in again, he has had very good and bad footing all day long. And again, that time you saw Gamble, Tracy from... Manning, South Carolina, again, turn him inside. Well, Tracy getting his first start last week against Wolford. He's been a backup linebacker. He's been all over the field today. They were a little uncertain of his run-stopping ability. They used him last year as a nickel backer in coverage. And uh, we're getting a little bit of a problem here. We, you, we just saw a, a shot of, uh, of the shoes of Joe Dupree, and that's, uh, that's caused Joe some problems, too, as well as Tracy Gamble. And I'm sure the Reebok people love that, but they probably have a little different cleat on another shoe. He might use it another time. Here's Dupree. He's throwing for Dawson well over his head and out of bounds. Back there was Cummings defending for the Citadel. Stops the clock with 3.33 left to play. Dupree's had very little time, Jeff, to really get back in the pocket and set and really kind of get a good pass off. And I think that he's a much better thrower when he throws from a, a, a pocket position rather than this little sprint out that they've been running. He's done it a number of times right and left. We've seen him overthrow and it's always been high. So it looks like a little bit of problem. He needs to set himself for his throwing, and that is a, a pocket throw, more than a, more than a throw on the run. Both defenses kind of bowling their back again here in the third period as Thatcher will kick it away for Georgia Southern. A big rush is on, and he hangs a beauty out of there. Back for the Citadel is Dan Johnson. Did he make a fair catch signal? He did not, and there's going to be a penalty on it, or was he not given enough room by Austin? We'll wait and see which way they're going to make that call. Nonetheless, it'll be the Citadel ball, and they'll have it. In their own territory, a 41-yard punt under a lot of pressure that time by Thatcher. 
So the Citadel down 16 to zip in the third period with 3.23 left to play. We'll get their hands on the ball. A gutsy call to go on a fourth down, and they made that but could not gain any more and had to give it up on the punt. He certainly flashed a hand in the air, and uh, uh, and I think he still had plenty of room to catch the football. I'm not really sure what, what this call is going to be, but they're talking to the Georgia Southern people. By the way, let me update you on some uh, other Southern Conference games. Appalachian State 14 to 6 in the third period over Liberty. It's been refused. Interference with a catch against me. Taken first down right here. So the interference uh, with the uh, with the interference. And again, let's see if they got the hand up. We'll get back to those scores in a moment. Yeah, he just flashes his uh, his right hand. He kind of waves up there, and it's not a real clear cut, but it, it's just enough. You only have to just get your hand in the air. That's not going to get you a taxi in New York, I'll tell you <laughs> that for sure. <laughs> well, now let's see it again here as Landis. Against the kicking team, first down, here. So interference with the catch again will give the Citadel their best field position all day there at the 46-yard line. Back to the scores, East Tennessee State leads Mars Hill 24 to nothing at the half. Don't forget later tonight on Sports South, we'll have Marshall against Murray State. That'll start at 6 p.m. Southern Conference, one of the best in 1AA, showing their wares again today. Right now, the Citadel with Walker on the option. Got a pitchman there, but he takes it on his own. And I'll tell you what, this little scat back has uh, some good running ability when he gets out on the option. Sam, for the very first time today, you saw him ensure the whole line of scrimmage. They had everybody blocked. Uh, they had uh, Huey Hunt, the inside linebacker, blocked. They had Nick Davis. 42 on the outside. Uh, everybody got a block. Look at Alex Mash is double teamed here. Uh, 44 on the inside doesn't do anything. Huey Hunt has got to run over some trash because Nick Davis is taken down. Everybody has got a little bit of block. That's where they're able to gain some room. And you saw how Austin had to respect the pitch on the outside as well, which opened up that running room. This time straight ahead to the 45-yard line. And again, the Citadel offense challenging for only their second first down of the afternoon. 10 so far for Georgia Southern in this ball game, and they stop the clock. They may want to look at this again on a measurement and also to unstack the pile of bodies that try to get up through the center of the line there. Charlie Taft looking on. Taft with his ball club, the Southern Conference champions of a year ago, 11 and 2, 6 and 1 in the conference, losing only to the eventual national champions, Marshall. And in the process, won six road games. They're trying for to continue that streak here this afternoon, but it's an uphill battle, but at least things are happening for the Citadel as they stretch the chains just shy of another first down. Just inches. Thank you, Mr. Landis. Talking to Charlie Taff about uh, some of the people he recruits, the fact that uh, they run this type of offense, a very highly disciplined wishbone offense where you have to minimize mistakes. That's one of the things he gets as far as the people they recruit. These are very disciplined young men who are committed to uh, a, a very firm set of rules that govern their daily day and uh, he's just he's excited about working with them because a lot of them are some of the future military leaders as well as some of the future leaders of our country. There you saw it in the 23 third down conversions that made only one this afternoon for either club and little use Terrence Rivers number 19 has continued to pound the middle here and let's see if they've got enough they spotted again very close to where they must go for the first down it would bring up a fourth if they don't make it this time. That's how tough this Georgia Southern defense has been all day. They haven't given them anything on first down, second down, and it's been tough to convert on third or even fourth down. They, I think they might have this just by the mark, but it wasn't easy. Al Seagraves, of course, the man that handles the offense, assistant head coach, kind of gnashing teeth over there along with the rest of the staff. As he's trying to get something going, they have enough, they do. The Citadel with their second first down of the afternoon. And again, interesting enough, only about three or four yards away from they got the last of the first downs. Could not do anything with the football after that one. Let's see what happens here. As Charlie Tapp and company again with 2.06 to go in the third and down 16 to nothing. Sam Smith along with Jeff Van Note, 18 years in the National Football League with the Atlanta Falcons. And Dave Branch from Washington University in St. Louis with us this afternoon as we watch Southern Conference football here in Statesboro. First and 10 now for the Citadel. Again, a unbroken wishbone. Two wide receivers split to the near side. This is Walker again. And Walker likes that dialing in of his own play, and he runs it out of there again. He was a wide receiver a year ago and played on the junior varsity as a part-time quarterback, but he's certainly having his day in the sun today in, in Statesboro. Well, they, they call this quarterback eight and nine. 
a run at wide right, wide left. He's using three blockers. He's all of his backfield blockers. And the option, I don't think, is really a consideration. They just want to get him into some short running lane. And uh, this is the second time in, the, in these two series that they've had in the second half where he's been able to pick up some good first down yardage. Tommy Spangler, the defensive coordinator there for Georgia Southern a moment ago, as he's hollering instructions to his D. They stay with that 4-3 flex with the middle linebacker about six or seven yards off the line of scrimmage. Here's the option, Walker again. Goes to the 35, short of a first down by about maybe two or three feet, but still short. It'll bring up a third down play. Sure gives the Citadel defense a much needed rest. They've been out there the majority of the first three quarters as the Citadel offense has picked up a little bit. And once again, 16 nothing. You know that this game is in, in perspective. Oops, look at that ball. Oops. Almost pops up there from the quarterback exchange. It's like a loaf of bread. He has a lucky bounce, though. And they go for it on his third down play, obviously, from only about two feet away. This time they give it to Rivers. Big opening on the right side, and he gets it to the 31. First down for the Citadel. And that may be the final play of the third period after the clock is stopped with 15 seconds. They'll roll it back into motion, and they may not get another play off. And we'll end this third period here in Statesboro. But things have started to turn a bit. The defense of Georgia Southern has bent, but not broken yet this afternoon. And now the Citadel with uh, Charlie Taff and company have started to get something going. Is it too late, however? A grind about football game. So far, both ball clubs staying uh, predominantly on the ground because their passing game has been so ineffective. And a first down play, and they won't get it off, and that is the end of the third period. So the defending Southern Conference champions, the Bulldogs of the Citadel, playing here against the new guys in the block, Georgia Southern and Eagles. Right now, the Eagles flying high, 16-0. Along with Jeff Van Note, as we're here at Paulson Stadium, where Georgia Southern has had themselves a command 62-5 since 1984. And right now against the Citadel with a first and 10 for the Bulldogs. As they go to the attack, almost an offsides there by Georgia Southern. And again, this is Rivers. You know, Rivers was not uh, a runner at all in the first half of the ballgame. They've kind of found a new weapon. Also with Jervy running out of the fullback spot and placing Sands, the Sandman, on the sideline right now. Yeah, they've uh, kind of changed their backfield. Eric Little's gone, Andrew Mitchum in there. Rivers is the fastest player they have on this football team. And last year he averaged about seven yards a carry. So he has got the speed to break a big play, and that might be what they're looking for the Citadel, uh, him gash him for a big run and, and get right back in this football game. Gained a little over two yards, second down and about seven and a half to go. Walker again, substituting for C.J. Haynes and Walker in trouble. Gets a little block he needed at the line of scrimmage and that's on second effort, gets back to the 25. Another gain on the play, they'll give him, uh, as a matter of fact, about three more yards. It'll bring up a third down and right at five yards for the Citadel. Sam, probably the most impressive thing I think about this Georgia Southern defense is their team speed and the fact they get a lot of people the ball. I mean, that's a broken play where he's going to uh, scramble and try to make something happen. And for just a second, there's a flash of field, and all of a sudden the blue closes in on him. Well, we'll see as Boatwright brings the play in for the sideline. Number one replacing uh, Flinham at one of the split receivers shot. And we'll see exactly as they put uh, Boatwright on the near sideline. Also, they've got uh, Greg Perry split out to the right side. Walker back. Options left side. Pitch. Comes back to Mitchum. And Mitchum, the young junior out of Leesburg, uh, Florida, comes up and gains only a couple of yards. Not enough for the first down again. He couldn't have hold it. He couldn't have held the ball any longer than he did. Good grammar there, note. Cantroy Walker does a great job of waiting to the last second, but a little hesitation, I think, by Mitchum. He stood. He should have taken it just straight up the field. A, a little bit of a swivel of his hip, and it allowed uh, this Georgia Southern quickness on defense to come into factor. Because they had a block on the corner of the outside, and everybody else had kind of overrun the play. So it's another fourth down try here for the Citadel. Down 16 to nothing now in the fourth quarter. They've got to go again. Fourth and two from the wishbone. Walker, he's got enough for more, and he goes inside the 15-yard line. Tell you what, this young uh, sophomore 
from Papano Beach in Florida has been very impressive in his uh, first outing here against Georgia Southern. He's the one that's added the spice to this offense since they've come out at half. They, this is where they've gotten their first downs, and all of them have been on his running, at least setting up, setting up the fourth downs and the third downs that they've had. His big runs, seven or eight yards here, four or five yards there. He's going to be an exciting football player in the future for Citadel. And again, they've almost totally revamped that backfield, as we pointed out a moment ago. Mitchum is still running there, along with Jervy and Rivers. But Walker's had almost a different look almost every time he's turned around behind him. Right now, first and 10 to go. They did spot at the 14. Sleep stumbled by Walker, but he's on the run. And from behind, caught and drugged down. I don't believe it was Nick Davis, number 42, that finally caught up and brought him down with the jersey. Just a little bit of a, a mix-up in the mesh between he and the fullback. I think that's Jersey, Travis Jersey. They just don't mesh at the, at the get-go. And, and once he gets started, though, he has a chance to make a big play. Maybe to dash for the mm. touch for the touchdown. A nice saving tackle by Nick Davis from behind. If the mesh is there, he might go all the way early. Charlie Taft may look at uh, tearaway jerseys the next time. He runs with Walker. Got pulled out. Look at the numbers on him. He's had a lot. 20 rushes for only 45 yards, but they've come and very opportunistic times here in the uh, period as that's Rivers, no place to go. Big charge from the inside, and that's Scott Davis, number 55, gets to celebrate. Powder Springs here in Georgia probably took a biggest lick he'd taken from one of his teammates as they congratulate him along the line of scrimmage. Well, if Andre Mitchum can get a better block, that's a, a great job by 55. Scott does a great job of Scott Davis of fighting off the block of Andre Mitchum. He didn't have his feet under him, talking about Mitchum, and he doesn't establish any solid contact, and that's just a, a great job when you're able not only to, to do your job as a defensive player, but knock the block down and then make the tackle. You see, they knocked him back a couple of yards, so it's now third down and four yards to go, and Walker doesn't like what he sees defensively, and will call the timeout, and maybe wisely so. Doesn't want to take a chance of having anything go right here with 10.53 to go in the game. Citadel now challenging. They're trying to score, trailing 16 to zip. Citadel now knocking on the door and plenty of time to do something about this deficit here in Statesboro. 10.53 to go. Walker bows under the wishbone. Walker on the motion. Pitches at the last second to Rivers. Rivers does not get enough for the first down. He's knocked off his feet outside the five. They'll spot it at the seven. So it'll bring up a fourth down, and they have to get to about the three and a half for the first down as they run it right in your living room here. Have not seen him pitch it very much, but this time he's forced to. A great job by Georgia Southern's Brancis Williams forcing him in to get rid of the ball maybe a little bit earlier than he wanted to or not allowing him to keep it because I think they would have liked to have kept the ball in Cantroy Walker's hands. Three and a half yard line is the target zone here for the Citadel to keep this drive alive or the end zone of which right now they're about seven yards away from. 10, 11 left to play. Walker with a long count. Hand off to the Sandman. He powers to about the three and a half. And again, where does the spot come? Very important putting down of the football all afternoon long on both sides. And another one forthcoming here for the Bulldogs of the Citadel. And there's the Sandman. He's back in there running fullback. You know, the body lean of Everett Sands might have gotten that first down. It just, uh, once again, it's all the mark. And this is about the fourth time they brought the chains out for the Citadel here to mark in the, in the second half. By the way, Sands needs just a shade over 900 yards to become the all-time rushing champion at the Citadel. And they've got enough for a first and goal. Stump Mitchell, very well known around the National Football League, is the all-time rushing leader at the Citadel. And Everett Sands from uh, Conway, South Carolina, could be the man challenging that before the year is over. Right now, the Citadel challenging Tim Stowers and his ball club as it's first to go to go from the three-yard line. And you don't want to do anything foolish with the football. You go to the big dance with what brought you there, and that, of course, is the wishbone and probably straight ahead here. Let's see what they do. Long count by Walker. Quick pitch to Mitchum. They get a little angle. There's a flag down behind the play. Another one coming down. They do get it down to about the two-yard line, but flags all over the place again from the officials. Clock stopping at 9.35 to go in the game. Citadel again will go on the road at Western Carolina. Georgia Southern really upset because their defense is going to be penalized again. Here's the referee. And it's a face mask on Georgia Southern on the end of that run. 
Well, when they review this film, the Georgia Southern coaches, one of the things they're going to point out, way too many penalties for them to challenge a, a team's week in and week out. They put themselves too much in the Incidental hole. face mask against, against the defense. Ball, Still first line. down. So it's now first and goal to go. They'll move the ball down to the one-yard line. Let's watch the end of this play now. Terrence Rivers, the lead halfback, and that may be something they, they sacrifice. I think that's uh, Sean Austin pulling yep. on that face mask, but they sacrifice a little bit of maybe of their blocking with Terrence, Mitch, uh, Terrence Rivers and, and Andre Mitchum in there. That might not be their strongest blocking group. Mitchum and Rivers lined up behind Sands. Walker, the quarterback, first and goal to go, but the time becoming a factor at 9-19 now. Citadel straight ahead to Sands. Touchdown to Citadel. So the first points of the afternoon by the Citadel took a long time in getting on the board. 9-12 to go in the fourth. And down 16-6 to six now. And Jeff and I were talking during the last time out. Do you go ahead and line up for the two, which is what looks like they're going to do? Because somewhere along the way, you've got to get a couple more scores to try to get yourself a win here today. Yeah, I keep thinking in terms of three scores and uh, rather than the, the option you have in college to go for the two. But uh, a nice job by the Citadel staff and and getting their offense picked up in the second half. They, they made the decision to go with Cantro Walker, and he's done a good job. He's responded very well when he's had the football in his hands. You know, it's really going to be interesting to see what Georgia Southern's offense responds with when they get their hands back and how well the defense of the Citadel stacks up. Let's see if they get the two. Walker, he's going to try to throw in the end zone. The left-hander does it. It's knocked down incomplete. Darius Dawson, the linebacker, number five, knocked it away. So the try for two. For the Citadel now means they must definitely go for the two big scores to try to come up with an opportunity to win. They're down by 10. Of course, uh, an extra point of two after a score and then a field goal would get you, of course, the opportunity to get the victory as well. So there's still a lot of drama here with 9-12 to go in this game after the score by the Citadel. We're going to take a look at, uh, well, we're seeing Darius Dawson there, but just a, a simple handoff, a nice get off on the left side by Bears, the offensive tackle, and Shane Stevens, the left guard. Nice job of getting off the football. From ground level, you can take a look at the try for the extra point, and again, a little against the grain. And it was well behind Sands and knocked away by Dawson in the end zone. So it'll be Georgia Southern getting the football back, or does the Citadel gamble on an onside kick here with 9-12 to go? Well, I think it was their defense is playing that uh, they're going to kick it off and hope they get three and out to get the football back, or maybe even get a turnover. This is such a low percentage play in football, and even though uh, I'm sure Trin works on it every day in practice and, and they've got their own onside, it's, it's just a hard thing to execute. The execution is just perfect. And, uh, it, it usually comes down to the key play, the last part of the game. Scoring drive for the Citadel. Took them 16 plays, and look at how much time it took them. They ran off a lot of time. 54 yards, and finally Sands banging it in from a yard away. Here is Trent. This will be a high one to be fielded back by Georgia Southern's number 21 right. Cuts to the outside. He's got a couple of blockers up that far sideline. And is finally knocked out of bounds right in front of the Citadel bench where Georgia Southern will take over first and 10. Stops the clock with 9.03 left to play. And this one is not over yet. The right is an exciting kickoff return man. I I worked the Furman Georgia Southern opener last year, and it was a nothing-nothing game at half. Georgia Southern had dominated uh, somewhat statistically, but never got a score. In the second half, Wright came out, ran one back 94 yards, and, and they took off to win that game 21 zip. Wright, by the way, in his 15 kickoff returns last year, averaged 27 yards, so that was one that certainly helped his average. Here again is the grind-out football of Georgia Southern. If they can grind some time with a flag down here, however, they certainly have a chance to ensure themselves of going at 2-0 and, oh and dropping the Citadel in their first conference game back to 0-2 and 0-1 and oh and in the conference. This is going to go against uh, the Citadel, maybe. They right now are discussing it. While we've got a momentary break, Florida State crushed Clemson today. Final score, 57 to nothing. Alabama over Vanderbilt, 17-6. to By the way, it was offside against the Citadel. Notre Dame over Michigan, big upset, 27 to 17. Appalachian State late leads uh, Liberty now, 14 to 12, tightening up there. And East Tennessee State has come up with a 24 to nothing win over Mars Hill. North Carolina, 38 21 over Maryland. North, Notre Dame found a quarterback. They did indeed. Georgia Southern trying to find some running room straight ahead, and they do as they move it out. 
And almost for enough for the first down is carrying the football number 36, Steve Williams. Williams and Stevens, the real workhorse in that one back offense of theirs with a flex ball, but there's an injured player down for Georgia Southern. Clock is stopped with 440 to play. It's always one of those things that uh, you want to play as much as you can. All the little bumps and bruises, you can kind of live with those. They'll, they'll heal, but it's major ones that you're trying to avoid. And this one, of course, looks like it's a little more severe than a certainly a bump and bruise. By the way, that was the first score for the Citadel in nine quarters here at Paulson Stadium. You may recall they were shut out in 1990 in the playoffs, 31 to nothing. Well, one of the things it does, too, is give it, this defense a lift. They, they're well rested now, having spent uh, the majority of that third quarter on the sideline after uh, spending the majority of the first half on the field. So they're a little rested now, and they got a chance maybe to come back and, uh, and create something. They need a turnover from Georgia Southern in order to get back and put this game in a much closer perspective. Damlin Hall, once again, is the man that is shaken up, a wide receiver, 6'4", out of Whitesville, North Carolina. Looks like he took something on the shoulder. The way he's holding that, that uh, is a, uh, looks like a separated, or I hope it's not that serious. Maybe it's just a bruised shoulder, but he's holding it very, like he can't bend it out. 12,921 have filed into this 18,000-seat stadium this afternoon on a gorgeous Saturday afternoon for football. It was enough for the first down for Georgia Southern, but now Dupree is going to be dropped for a big loss. As again, guess what? Tracy Gamble, the man we highlighted at the top of the show, good, good pick on the outstanding player defensively for them. He's been a good one today. Well, he's, he's done an outstanding job. He's been all over the field. Inside out is how you want to play this wishbone, and uh, he's doing it. His, his guys up front, though, are doing a pretty good job. It's a nice crash out of Sizer there, I think, and, and he's able to do the scrape the way you want it. Got some good quickness for a middle linebacker. You know, one of the things also on that replay from behind, you could almost see he saw the key and reacted to the hole where he knew it was going or where he'd have an opening. Dupree crashed and dropped again. That time it was Dellinger. Number 59, Sizer from the other side. They crashed in the middle. Also coming up is Lenny Clark, number 77. And they had a party right on top of Dupree as they sack him for another loss here. Well, you, you've got to read blitz as you're coming to the line of scrimmage. This play is taking a little time to develop. And, uh, Franklin Stevens unable to get over and put the trap block on Dellinger for a tackle. By the way, Gamble, 12 tackles already this afternoon. Got 13 against Wolford last week. Little movement there as Dupree again is smothered out. And again, that's number 77, Lenny Clark from Savannah. And the Citadel defense with 7.09 left to play forces Georgia Southern into kicking the ball on a fourth down and about 21 yards needed. Whereas Charlie Taft is really going to point to his defense as a really rising up today. Dellinger's been all over the field along with Tracy Gamble. At the same time, I'm sure Coach Stowers is going to say our offense has been a little bit inconsistent. We had some big plays, but we weren't able to keep in there and slug it out. Let's see if they come at Thatcher. They do not. They're setting up for a run back. Cummings will feel this one about his own 23. He'll have nobody to block for him as the run back did not materialize. Georgia Southern got down there nicely. So as the clock starts to tick away, 8.36 left to go, and little and big alike here at Georgia Southern. Anxiety starts to set in. Now 16-6, the Citadel starting to charge again. Point lead, let's go down to Dave Branch for an injury report on the sidelines. Dave? Sam, uh, Isaac Farrell, he's a backup wide receiver for the Eagles. He jammed his left shoulder. They don't think it's dislocated, probably just what they call a stinger. He's got a little bit of numbness, but he should be okay. Thank Back you. upstairs. Thank you, Dave. That also cleared it up because Farrell, normally wearing number 70, switches into 88 when he plays tight end. Stacy Moses, number 77, switches to 83 when he's at tight end. So again, it was Farrell, a gentleman that was injured from Warner Robbins High School here in Georgia. And he again got the stinger, as it indicated. Hopefully nothing serious for him. But again, that was Isaac Farrell with the injury rather than Hall that we had mentioned earlier. So with a one running play in the middle, again, two yards against Sands, carrying the football. Let's see if they do something on the option as again Walker down the line of scrimmage. Keeps it on his own, gains it out to about the 36-yard line, but this is using a lot of time for the Bulldogs. Under six minutes, 5.46 to go and down by 10. The defense of the Citadel has done what they needed to do, and that's get the football back, and now it's up to the offense to try to make something happen. You watch that Citadel line, and they're going for the low cut blocks a little bit, and uh, both Michael Morris that time and Alex Mash just able to hop over 
uh, the respective people that uh, are trying to block them because they're too low. You've got to be low. Low man usually wins, but it has to be in perspective to where the guy over you is playing. Don't go too low and let him get in the backfield. Third and four for the Citadel. Walker again using that long snap count. Gives it up to Sands. He's got enough with another spot to the 40-yard line and up for a first down. So first and ten for the Citadels as Sands, who has been replaced by Tyrone, excuse me, by uh, Jervy early in the ball game and then in the start of the second half, has come back in and run very, very well here for the Citadel. He has picked it up a little bit in the second half. Yep. They gave him a, a breather. He sat out for a while, and uh, that was his best run of the day. He hasn't picked up a lot of yardage, but that's a, that's a vault over a number of people to pick up that first down. Tim Stowers from Georgia Southern looking on in his fourth year, only 35 years of age, one of the youngest Division I coaches in America. And right now with the Citadel looking at a stack can as a clock, 442. Here's the big charge. Davis was the first to get there. Then from the backside, got all kinds of help. Hunt was the next man there. And also coming is Charlie Bird. Everybody meeting at the quarterback, Walker, and he decks him for a big loss. Back to the 34-yard line. They'll make it no, the 30-yard line. Excuse me. Davis reads flow his way. He's the outside backer. Maybe Everett Sands should have come over and take a look outside rather than take that peek back inside. He took his eye off Davis, and that's all Davis needed. But maybe a little bit of the experience also of Cantre Walker. He probably should have set up a little bit back behind the offensive line and, and, and instead of getting a little too wide. As Nick Davis gets the fourth sack of the afternoon, the other three belonging to Alex Mash. Georgia Southern puts the Citadel back on their own 30 with a second down and 20 yards to go. Here's the delay handoff. Nothing doing. They try to give it straight ahead to Little, and there's little, if any, to give there, and he is decked. Well, once again, a little, little trouble ensuring the back block. That's the block by the center. Bart Hearn has got to get back on one of the defensive tackles. In this case, it's Brian Sellers. He's had a little difficulty with that all day long against Mash and Sellers. And, and by alignment, and, and certainly by the type of football players they are, he, they've made it difficult. Georgia Southern needed some help on that defensive line, even though they had some good people, went to the junior colleges and Pearl River Community College to get Brian Sellers, and he's paid dividends. Yeah, Sands fighting for some yards on this third down and long as they'll move it to the 30, and it'll be a kick time for the Citadel, and now the clock definitely an ally of Georgia Southern, only 3.09 left to play. And now their defense for the Eagles gets a nice round of applause from this crowd in Statesboro. Certainly not a lot of time left, but you, you've got to punt the ball in this situation. Uh, you cannot give them this kind of field position if you can't convert fourth and about 21. Dawson stands back for Georgia Southern on his 33-yard line. Almost a bad handle, it is, and it's finally blocked by Austin. The ball takes a great Citadel bounce, though, and will finally roll all the way down to about the 40-yard line. That was a major break for Paulson because Austin, Sean Austin, number 18, had gotten in and got a hand on that ball, and it took a friendly bounce for the Bulldogs, and now it'll be Georgia Southern trying to run out the clock with 2.33 left to play and leading by 10. He was looking down a loaded gun barrel as he's trying to kick it out, but he fumbled, and that was his biggest problem. Yeah, Sam, I mean, that, that, that's an easy catch, a fine snap, but just that lack of uh, concentration yep. at the last second, taking your eye off of it, maybe he felt that rush from Sean Austin on the outside. There's Austin getting to breathe a little easier here on the sideline as Georgia Southern, for their lead, now just go with their power backs, and they try to option it to the outside on the little fake, and it's going to go for nothing there, losing yardage again. I tell you what, Citadel's defense may get to fly back to Charleston, but the others are going to have to bust because the defense <laughs> earned themselves an opportunity. <laughs> well, Lane Dellinger has been a nice surprise, I think, for Charlie Taft's defense. Again, he's got great play out of Tracy Gamble, but Dellinger, Sizer, they've done a good job as the ends. Here's a guy who, who missed all of last year after injuring himself against Arkansas. He's a big play type of player. He's been all over the field today, put a lot of pressure inside. Very intense, very active, as you can see. Dupree on the option. From the backside, gets caught down by, you guessed it, Tracy Gamble, number 93. The one that tracked him down. Got some four on the outside, however. By Huey uh, Cohen, made the stop also number 22 for the Citadel. Now only a minute 38 to go. By the way, before we get out of here, our thanks going to Josh Baker of the Citadel for his help from the Sports Information Office and also Matt Rogers and all the great people Right here around Georgia Southern, always make it a very special trip when we come to Statesboro or, for that matter, down in Charleston as well. We appreciate all of the SIDs, the athletic directors, and certainly these two fine coaching staffs 
who have helped in our preparation of the game today. To all, thank you very much. Dupree. This muscle football here for Georgia Southern. And that's what they built their bread and butter under Irk Russell. They just lined up in that flex and the wishbone and just ran it right down your throat to win those four national titles. And right now they're showing they can use a little of the clock. Not as impressive as they want to be because Citadel's defense has really bowed their back here in the second half. Well, I think both coaches uh, are, you know, are going to really question some things about their football team. Obviously, Charlie Taff on offense, but he's got to be excited about the way his defense has regrouped. At, and at the same time, the Georgia Southern, they need to be more consistent offensively. A timeout has been called. Only 53 seconds left to go. Georgia Southern in command. 16 to 6. We'll be back for the final moments of this game. As remain till the end of the game, this will be Citadel with their lowest scoring output since they lost 31 to nothing here at Georgia Southern back in November of 1990. So they have had trouble when they come here, and certainly with only six points on the board, it's been a tough afternoon for Charlie Taff offensively for the Bulldogs. Yeah, but he, I think he's found a little bit on his offense. Uh, Cantroy Walker. He's done a, an excellent job. Here's that quick punt again. So they step into it as Thatcher gets ready to punt. Citadel read this one a little better this time. And Johnson going back, and he'll feel this one on the run. They desperately need to run back. He fumbles the ball, and on top of it, it'll be Georgia Southern coming up for the fumble recovery. It appears it'll be Travis Taylor. Taylor, you may recall, is a man that created the deep fumble back in the opening kickoff of the game, knocked it away from Mitchum. Big Pin came up with a fumble recovery, but now Taylor, Travis Taylor, out of Hardysville, South Carolina, comes up with another big uh, gobble up of a fumble, and Georgia Southern has just about slammed the door on it here this afternoon now. you got to feel like Dan Johnson sees Sean Austin bearing down on him and just takes his eye off that ball for a second, and he's trying to make a play happen, and it's unfortunate he fumbles here. It's certainly unfortunate to... Uh, the Citadel's defense, which has played so well, to be put in this position. Georgia Southern goes to Marshall next week, while the Citadel goes to Western Carolina, still in the Southern Conference. Dupree, despite that, should oh, be a flag. Gamble. It is. That's an unnecessary roughness, and that unfortunately comes from Gamble, who's had just a magnificent day. There was already a flag down on a motion penalty on uh, Georgia Southern. They had two men moving on at the same time, and that would bring back the play, but then they tack on the personal foul in the end. Yeah, it's, it's not a spear, and, and he's not trying to be too aggressive. It's just kind of indecisive decision on his part. At the same time, he, he needs to recognize Joe Dupree just trying to get down and, and get this clock running. They're not trying to score right here. So again, you see the signals coming from Mr. Landis, our referee, as the motion being called on uh, the procedure, called on Georgia Mark Southern. Well, the, the audience collectively call that one, yeah though, didn't everybody that, 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 in this everybody in the building I think oh but it wasn't a, I, I don't think it wasn't an intentional spear it was just a little indecisiveness on his part should I should I hit him is he trying to go down and he's kind of caught in between there and especially for a guy as aggressive as Tracy Campbell has been today okay we had illegal motion on the offense a live ball foul we got to penalize that first so again this is the step off against Georgia Southern it's like playing tic-tac-toe, you know? I mean, uh, you put your X and I'll put my zero. And now they'll march off the personal foul penalty against uh, Charlie Taff and Citadel. And again, you see the personal foul. Defense, that's penalized half the distance, and it's an automatic first down. So there you have the entire setup of this at the nine, make it the eight and a half yard line. Georgia Southern with only 33 seconds to go in the game. Before it gets a little hectic around here, our thanks to Dave Branch down on the field. Job well done. And, Jeff, an opportunity to work for you with, the, with you the first time. Enjoyed it very much this yeah, afternoon. Sam, been my pleasure. I, it's been interesting talking to you and uh, learning a little bit about your background. I look forward to, to your catching you sometime on this boxing. I know it's not going to be in Dusseldorf, though. <laughs> you and your wife had a safe drive back to Atlanta. Here's the handoff straight ahead. Goes to Stevens. Stevens, you can see, still trying to push for some yards as we have 20 seconds to go in this one before it's over. Don't forget, Sports South will carry the defending national champions, Marshall, against Murray State later this afternoon, coming up at 6 p.m. So the clock, you see, winds down, and that'll be it for this afternoon as Georgia Southern had waited for this day a long, long time as a member of the Southern Conference, and they earn it the old-fashioned way, 16-6 over the defending champion, Citadel. Their defense for Citadel was outstanding. Their offense had some uh, rust on it. They've got to get off before they go to Western Carolina as the two coaches head for the center of the field as they'll handshake for the first time as collective members of the Southern Conference. And on this day, Tim Stowers and Georgia Southern outdo Charlie Staff and his Citadel Bulldogs. We're back with more on a wrap-up in a moment. 
Georgia Southern uh, disappointing in some respects for the Citadels. They lose by 10. It is a big day. Anytime you win is, a, is a, gi a gigantic day, especially their first Southern Conference win as a Southern Conference member. At the same time, Citadel looks like that they found the defense they lost last week, something to build on for them the rest of the year. So the Southern Boosters will be going out of here happy as they win it by the score of 16 to 6. Sands the only score in the second half. He dies in from one way, a yard away for the Citadel, but not enough here this afternoon as the Eagles win their first ever Southern Conference game. It's been a delight for us to join you here on Sports South, and until we see you again on the next Southern Conference game, let's remind you that from Jeff Van Note, along with Dave Branch, this is Sam Smith. To all of the folks behind the scenes, thank you for a job well done to you. Till next time, so long, everybody, from Statesboro.